Saints, this, these Saints fans don't particularly like that, but this is this is a break they certainly could have could have, would have liked to have had right here. Bruce Clark with a great game Monday night joined Dylan Moore and Jim Wilkes in the front line. Ricky Jackson, Jim Kovach, and Dennis Winston and Whitney Paul, the linebackers. And the secondary, Dave Wehmer, who made the tackle on Sullivan, Johnny Pearl, Russell Gary, and Frank Watley. They have not come up with many interceptions this year. Only eight, as a matter of fact, as a team. Second down and ten. Third offensive play of the game. Roger Craig. Spilled as he turns the corner with a gain of three. It'll be third down and seven. Jim Kovach, Dr. Kovach, is giving good chase there. You know, the thing that we should really set these fans and, and, and kind of get them aware of is the fact that Bill Walsh told us earlier that we're going to feature Nehemiah today. We think that he's a guy that, you know, Ronaldo being the screener that he is, can really accelerate and use his sprinter speed on artificial surface. Today, we should look for Nehemiah to try to really get, get those seams and go deep with him. Nehemiah out of the lineup right now. So Solomon breaks left and Clark comes right and Earl Cooper, the tight end, lines up tied to the left. Third and seven. Saints, Saints will not play. Screen pass, left side is dropped. It'll be fourth down. The pressure from Ricky Jackson. It was intended for Wendell Tyler. Well, when you put pressure on the quarterback and you bring your linebackers up to take the backs coming out of the backfield and you have a screen on Burn, it's virtually impossible to complete that. That time, Ricky Jackson right in the face of Wendell Tyler, incomplete. We'll now see Ray Worsing, who is having a great year, 101 points so far this season, leads the NFL in scoring. He is 21 of 26 in 1984 and this will be a 47-yard field goal effort. Missed it. Third time this year, Worsing has missed from inside the 40s. I was congratulating him yesterday on a great year he was having. He just laughed and said, oh, no, it could be better. And I, I guess he could say right now that this kick could be better because it hooks it, goes a little bit left. Saints dodge a bullet early here in the first quarter. That's Look. an angry Austrian. <laughs> so can you believe it? New Orleans takes over at the 30-yard line. It'll be Richard Todd at quarterback George Rogers at one of the running backs. Hokey Gajon still out with a calf injury. Gives way to Wayne Wilson. Jeff Groth in motion to the right side. Rogers for about two and a half. Saints offensive line features a very banged up offensive line. Richard Todd, Rogers, Wayne Wilson starting this week in place of Gajon. Jeff Groth at one wide receiver and Lindsey Scott takes the place of Tyrone Young. He's out with a bad ankle. And up front, the tight end, Hobie Brenner, Kelvin Clark, Brad Edelman back off injured reserve. John Hill, the 13-year vet at center. Louis Oubre gets a start today for Steve Court, who pulled a hamstring on Thursday. And Stan Buck is the only offensive lineman who has started every game at the same position this year. He's at right tackle. here Kenny liked the short hooks over the middle and Staley would drop back and first thing he looked for was Hobie sliding in on those zones popping with the football now with Richard who likes to go downfield first and come to the tight end later it's been a little different but he has had his biggest game this year third down two Brenner had six catches and went over St. Louis four and went over Atlanta other than that no more than one per game Rogers good blocking first down at the midfield Mono Tuiasa Sopo and Dwayne Board up front. The linebackers Dan Bunce, Ricky Ellison, Jim Farnhorst starts for Jack Reynolds. Reynolds sprained his back on Thursday. Tina Turner at the outside linebacker spot. There's the big change. Mario Clark, who was victimized by Steve DeBerg and Gerald Carter last week, will start in place of Ronnie Lott, Eric Wright, Carlton Williamson, and Dwight Hicks in the defensive secondary. First down and ten. We want to welcome those of you who've been watching the Los Angeles Rams and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's first down 10, New Orleans, no score in the game as Wayne Wilson or George Rogers cuts around the right side 
and picks up about four. Eric Dickerson with 191 yards. Well, I think his pace has to be around 141 yards to break O.J. Simpson, and that 191 gives him, what, a 50-yard cushion there for the next three games they have left. Obed Ariri missed an extra point in that game. That was the difference, and the Saints fans, of course, were hopeful of a Tampa Bay win because Los Angeles and New Orleans among the teams in the battle for the wild card spot. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Terry Bradshaw. We're in the Superdome in New Orleans. No score in the game. Something in six. Rogers and Fred Dean had come. There he is. And it's not Fred Dean. It's mean Fred Dean. They call him in college mean Fred Dean. And tonight we will call him mean Fred Dean. Number 74. These guys are glad to have him back. He's our specialist now. You know, the old pass rushing specialist. The new one. Third and three now, so we'll not see Fred. Well, we are going to see Fred Dean on this play. You helped recruit him for Louisiana Tech, right? Well, I did. I sure would like to take all the credit in the world for getting him there, but I don't think I can. But I did have a few nice words to say to him about the great university and all those nice things to get him over there. Third and three, 11.05 to go, first quarter. No score in the game. Ray Wurzel missed a 47-yard field goal. Across the middle, Brennan, second catch. So early on, indications, Terry Bradshaw, that Richard Todd is looking in Brenner's direction. But what he, what he had that time was Richard came out, and he saw the zone right off the bat. He saw the linebackers drop back deep. He, had, he knew he had Hobie coming inside, sitting down between the linebackers. One, two, three. There he is. Popped him with the football. First down. He has been erratic, as we said at the top of the program. But against Tampa Bay, St. Louis, Cleveland, Atlanta, and Pittsburgh, he has had in excess of 200 yards, and each of those games has been a victory he's, for him. He's played well, and they've won those football games. He knows this, and today he knows there's a lot of pressure on him to play one of his better football games. Rodgers, Oubre in front, and Rodgers inside the 30 to the 29. I'll tell you what they're doing. I, they're, these Saints are coming off the ball. Boy, they're really exploding. they got a lot of adrenaline going. They're emotional. They're high. And you really can see it as their linemen come off the ball, position ball, and just drive these 49ers back. Good hard running by Rodgers that time. For those of you who were watching the L.A. Tampa game, Freddie Solomon opened this game with a 47-yard reverse. However, the drive stalled. The Lurgeon tried a 47-yard field goal. It was unsuccessful. Now we've got a second down and four. Junior Miller, one of the heroes in the Monday night win over Pittsburgh, is up on the line left. Intended for Jeff Growth, incomplete. Elsewhere around the National Football League today, Giants come from behind and keep pace with the Redskins and Cowboys. They go 8-5 and five as they defeat Kansas City, 28-27. Cleveland hands Houston yet one more defeat. Marty Schottenheimer's got that uh, Cleveland team playing well now, 27-10. Third down and four. First meeting between these two teams, Terry, Richard Todd had a nightmare. Two out of seven with three passing receptions in the first quarter. Well, that was when he was, you know, really just getting used to the offense. He's been a while now, and there's definitely a change. Well, was. Was. <laughs> but, Rogers but, recovers. Excuse me. That, that was a fact. He came in, and this offense was new to him. He went out, in, he went out in, uh, into Tampa Bay, I mean, the, the Bay Area, had a lousy game. Now he's got a chance to redeem himself. We talk about it, come out, Rogers. It really looks like he didn't even know the football was coming to him. Well, Bum Phillips is sending Morton Anderson on to try a, a long field goal. Anderson had a game winner of 53 yards into the wind and rain in Cleveland about three weeks ago. This will be a 54 or five yard effort. We'll see what they call it officially. He's plus, he's two for two over 50 yards this year. So thus far, two missed field goals. One from 47, one from 55, back in a moment. First scoreless game, both teams missing field goals so far. Wendell Tyler in his second year now with the 49ers, over 1,000 yards for the season, 1,008. And closing in on his career high. First and 10. Montana to Tyler, a quick 10. Now, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for an NFL update. 
and here is the play that keeps the Giants tied for first in the wild NFC East. It was Sims to Moat. It was second and goal. And then they add the extra point, and they beat the Chiefs 28-27. Back to Burn. Well, eight and five, the Cowboys eight and five, the Redskins going eight and five. It's a crazy division. Jerry. Gosh, who would ever thought that the Giants and Redskins and Cardinals, all those guys have been fighting for that, that division championship. Tyler for the first down as he gets a block with Roger Craig. Wendell Tyler acquired just before the season began last year. And Terry, if you if you compare this team to the 81 Super Bowl championship team, the running attack is with the improvements well, come. Burn, the thing that's so different is the fact that they probably averaged probably 70, 80 yards back in, in 81. And when they won the 82 Super Bowl this year, they're averaging right at 150. Wendell Tyler, over 1,000 yards, about 196 yards. He'd be the all-time leading 49er rusher. They've, they've got a great combination with Tyler doing the majority of their running and Roger Craig also getting them good yardage rushing, but also an outstanding pass receiver. Good I, balance in that backfield. I love what Tyler said about Craig in the NFL today. He said he's like a flute. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like him to explain that. It made sense when he said it. <laughs> Wendell Tyler with the carry. Well, smile broadens on Mr. Bradshaw's face. 52-24. Gee whiz. Mark Malone had a good day. Obviously. Danny Fouts must have been injured or just had a lousy day. As a matter day. of fact, he did get injured and went out late in the game. Sure did. Carl Monroe comes in in place of Wendell Tyler now. That's that tough AFC Central too, uh -huh. Second down, five. Montana, quick pop across the middle. Almost picked off. It was Jim Kovach, number 52, who got his hand in the way of the pass. I tell number 89, Earl Cooper. You know, Vern, this guy used to play fullback. He was a running back. They moved him to tight end. And really said, look, if you don't play tight end for us and excel, you're not going to make this football team. And he has done just that excel. Joe tried to get him in there on a blitz control, but Kovach, number 52, read Joe's eyes, got over and got a hand in the face of Cooper, knocked that football down. Doggone near intercepted. Two weeks ago, Kovach had to sit out of the Atlanta win because of the knee injury. He was back Monday night, and as you saw on the graphic, had 12 tackles. Wendell Tyler back in, third down, five. 46 to go first quarter scoreless game. Look at the Saints playing with him. Safety's coming up, linebackers coming up, trying to get Joe to get out. Montana for Solomon. Okay. Overthrown. Dave Weimer is closest man there. You know, those things work. When you have a, a quarterback that's outstanding as Montana, the only edge you have is confusion. Try to get him to just. Try him to see man coverage in a, and make audibles to zones and vice versa. That time they came up, faked the blitz, hoping to get Joe out of it. He didn't fall for it. Stayed with his play. No one open, threw the ball away. Deep man will be Jitter Fields, who's missed three games because of injuries this year, but still has posted a 9.7 yard return. Max Runniger's kick. Beauty. Some pressure. Oh. Into the end zone, touchback. It'll come out to the 20. Runniger acquired in the third week of the season from Philadelphia. Timeout has been called. 6.32 to go. First quarter, no score. Phillips. They had such high hopes when the season began, and they've still got hopes of the playoff spot, but it's been a struggle. They're 6-6. Six and six. Pitch out, left side. George Rogers breaks the tackle. Surges for seven yards. Well, it's been a crazy NFC Eastern Division, and we've got some more information on that. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Burn the Eagles lead, 16-14. Neil O'Donohue of the Cardinals set to attempt a 44-yard field goal that could keep the Cardinals' playoff hopes alive. The kick is up, and it is good. 17-16, six seconds to go now, and it's going to wind down. The Cardinals have just won it. Let's go back to Burn. Well, O'Donohue, of all people, he was a big uh, hero in the win over Washington earlier this year. The Cardinals keep their hopes alive. Earl Campbell. First time he has carried the ball this afternoon. He carried only five times last week. Did not play at all against Atlanta. Terry, I know you spent about an hour with him on Friday, and, and he's not a real happy human being well, right he's, now. Well, this is his first time ever in his career that he has. A, he's a spot player. He's on the bench. He's never been there before. He doesn't really understand why he's there. He understands the position he's in, that the Saints got him in at midseason. He's going to have to wait his time, maybe the training camp next year, to find a place for him on this football team. Otherwise, he doesn't want to be traded anymore. He said third time, no way. First down and 10. Campbell. Back in the eye. Todd to throw. Whoops. Whoops. Still has it. 
and manages to elude the tackles for a couple of yards. Richard tried to get the ball outside that time to, to Groth, who was on his left, running a corner route, and they had a weak side linebacker blitz. Keena Turner, number 58. He came inside. Richard pumped the football, missed him. He wasn't open, turned around, and Keena forced him out. Richard did a good job of getting away and picking up a yard. Campbell out, Junior Miller in, second down and nine. No score in the game. Missed field goals on both sides of the ball so far. Officially, they'll call it second and eight. 4.35 to go, first quarter. Time with the drop play to Wayne Wilson for the 40-yard line. The other side of the Campbell story is George Rogers. He rushed for 102 yards in the first game of the year and has not been close to that since. He did play the entire Atlanta game, and uh, we were told he was as happy as a puppy after that game. Well, the thing that is very, I think, uh, unsettling to the Saints fans and fans in general around the, the United States is that how do you keep two superstars, both tailbacks, happy on the same ball club? I say it's impossible. George Rogers is a starting player. Earl Campbell is the guy that's going to spell it. I tell you, I would like to have that problem if I were a coach. Third down, two. Rodgers, fourth down. In your mind, is there a spot for both of them in the same backfield for one play fullback? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I told Earl this. I said, you know, you're, you're such a great running back. Uh, would you mind playing fullback? And he said, I wouldn't mind playing fullback here because this is a football team that runs the fullback as much as they run their tailback. And he said, I wouldn't mind it at all. You know, he's not really complaining that much about not playing. He's just not sure about his future. And that can be very unsettling. I know. <laughs> Dana McElmore back to return Brian Hansen's punt. You saw the season average. He kicked at 47.7 yards per kick Monday night, but often has a problem with out kicking his coverage. That'll be the case here. But he does chase McElmore to the nine. And McElmore is down to 17. Hobie Brenner with a tackle. of you who have been watching that thrilling St. Louis Philadelphia football game won by Neil O'Donohue with that last second field goal 17-16 our score 0-0 both teams have missed field goals thus far I'm Vern Lundquist along with Terry Bradshaw San Francisco has the ball for the third time in the game we've got no score with 3-11 remaining first quarter 49ers open it up with a reverse to Freddie Solomon for 47 yards but the drive stalled that was their deepest penetration here's Montana with a flip out in the left flat, caught by Freddie Solomon. Catch was made by Earl Cooper. Total offense, St. Louis, 411-yard average. The 49ers now, Terry Bradshaw, with 405. But in contrast to previous years, they're really mixing it up between offense, running and passing. Well, they're averaging, like I said earlier, about 150 yards rushing a game as, and about 250 as compared to about 80 and almost 290 yards. So they have changed it around, got to what Bill Walsh said is a conventional attack. 3.02 to go, scoreless first quarter. Bill Walsh on the far side. What is a conventional attack? You know what that is, Vern? I think he's talking about just a regular split back attack. Isn't That's it? right. Just tight end, two wide receivers, two running backs. First down, 10. Oh, Tyler. Somebody mentioned tough, tough to tackle. I'll tell you what was so amazing about this run is the fact that the Tyler, as you see, Joel Montana's going to turn around, straight back, gives it to Tyler. He's just going to read the block. 74, Derlin Moore hits him. Kovach hits him, misses him. He gets outside. Then I'm going to see Ricky Jackson, 57, coming to your pitcher, and he finishes him all right there. This is just great running. This guy has great balance, hard to bring down. They take him out, spell him, give him a break. Four for 46 yards, first quarter. It's a pretty good day already. 2.19 to go first quarter, and a big first down for the 49ers. Man coverage deep. A little bumping and shoving going on at the 25. Johnny Poe is asking for offensive pass interference. 
Nehemiah was the deep man, and as Bill Walsh told us yesterday, he's going to go deep to him today. Well, Johnny Poe is the person that's been attacked deep most by the by the Saints opponents this year. You're going to see Nehemiah just drive. Look at it high. Oh, he's just sprinting. Turns Poe. Now, per, Poe is in a foot race right now. The ball is actually was thrown to the outside where Poe had defensive coverage. Had Joe led the ball to the inside where there were no safeties whatsoever, Nehemiah had a better chance to catch that football as it is. Poe looked good. This is not a typical start for this guy. Montana, 43 of 53 the last two weeks. He was 19 of 23 last week. It is not a typical start. Draw play goes to Tyler. His fifth carry of the first quarter as we have two minutes remaining with no score. Elsewhere around the National Football League, the Raiders have taken an early lead over Indianapolis, 7-0 out on the coast. And Seattle with an early lead over Denver at Mile High Stadium, 7-3. Sterling Moore, who has been bothered by injuries most of the year. Nose tackle is down for the Saints. Interestingly enough, the Saints activated Tony Elliott just yesterday. He plays that nose tackle position. No, more of the nose tackle, number 74, Fred, Fred Quill in the center. As you can see, they're sitting right over top of one another. The play starts. He just engages, gets right up underneath Quill and stands right there, pushes him off and tries to make the tackle. Now you see his knee collapse, and then 75, Bruce Clark falls on top of his knee. That's not the only indication I have there of how he got hurt. There's just a big pile up there, and he had his knee in a bad position. Second round draft choice 12 years ago from Oklahoma. He has been sent a consistent fixture in that nose tackle spot. Jim Wilkes, 94, Burns, going to take his spot. It's interesting now because Wilkes, who is the starting right end, moves into nose tackle. And Frank Warren, I assume, will move up number 73, and he'll be the right defensive end for the Saints. 794, Jim Wilkes. I'm talking big now. How, much, how tough is it for, for a fellow who is playing on that outside spot to move that nose tackle is not their favorite Well, I'll tell you what, there's not, there are very few people out there that are built for the nose tackle position, and there are very few that have the demeanor, the, the, the intestinal fortitude to even line up and play that spot. In the meantime, on third down, the Saints go with a four-man front. Montana across the middle, gets the drop. Johnny Cole almost had the interception. I'll tell you what. You know, sometimes you come into a football game and you say, look, 25's their weak link. Let's attack Johnny Poe. He's a guy. And you can see it. They tell you right away who they think they can beat. 25 is the guy they think they can beat. Now, Joe right now should have had this ball intercepted and probably the one he threw to Nehemiah. He sets up. He comes back. He fires across. And look at the burst of speed that number 25 Johnny Poe made to cut in front of the ball that was intended for Dwight Clark. As a result of which, Max Runniger is on the kick, and he does so over the head of Jitter Fields. It gets a great bounce out of bounds at the eight-yard line. So Runniger has put New Orleans in bad field position with a 54-yard kick. Saints have the ball at the eight. Well, Derlin Moore, apparently not the knee, but instead, Terry, it's, his, it's that right foot. Well, that's the foot I believe he's had injured and hurt earlier in the year, and he's had a lot of problems. He finally came back on it. It looks like doggone he got it hurt again. No score, 128 to go first quarter. Saints first and 10 to the eight. Up the middle, George Rogers. Quick opener to the 14-yard line. Jim Fonhorst and Ricky Ellison collaborate on the tackle for the 49ers. I tell you, they're really doing a fine job that time to try to stop their inside running attack. Their linebackers, 55, Jim Fonhorst and, 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 and Ellison came up inside and tried to jam inside quick to knock off the guards. Couldn't do it. Still a good play. Fonhorst starting for Jack Reynolds, who had the back sprain in practice on Thursday. Second down, four. Final minute of the first quarter. Rodgers again. Nope. Oh, stuck it at the 16-yard line. We're going to watch 55 again, Fonhorst. You're going to see a guy who's taking a place of hacksaw Jack Reynolds. There you see him right here in the center of your screen. There's a snap. He reads the center in the guard pull. He crosses over, cuts inside, sets right in there, makes Hill. Boom, there's the tackle right there on Rodgers. Boy, that's a good job there, Vern. 79, Stucky came in and got, you know, that's one of those assists when you can fall on top of guys. <laughs> the coach said, oh, good assist there, Jim. I like that. Ricky Ellison also got there. Third down and short. Third and two. Tyrone Anthony is the running back now, the rookie from North Carolina for the Saints. Anthony with a carry. Uh, I'll see where the spot is. Dwayne Board and Ricky Ellison made the tackle. Up at the top of your screen, you see Tyrone Young saying, yes, we got it, but they'll bring the chains in. You know, one of the things that we're going to see throughout, there's Bum Phillips. 
I had a lot of good games against this fellow when he was down in Houston. A really a, a unique kind of individual, different you're, than most coaches. You're the reason he never got the door kicked in. Don't blame that on me now. <laughs> <laughs> i got to go down there sometime. <laughs> Did not get it. Dylan Moore has sprained his right foot and is doubtful for the remainder of the game. Naturally, the fans say go for it on fourth and an inch from inside the 20, but Brian Hansen will come on. This 49er defense, we've talked a little bit about the improvement of their rushing game. Their, their average against the run this year defensively has been terrific. They've only been giving up 104 yards per game on the ground. Well, you got to turn it around and look and see how many yards they're giving up in the air. You know how that thing's kind of misleading either. You're, you're leading the league in, pat, in run defense, but you're giving up 300 yards passing. Well, that, that will explain that. We've gone up and down the field a couple of times. There have been two missed field goals, but we have no score. We have reached the end of the first quarter. <laughs> Moore is back to return it. Fourth down, less than a foot for the New Orleans Saints. We begin the second quarter. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Terry Bradshaw. Here's the kick by Hanson. It's a dandy. McElmore all the way to the 27-yard line. But again, he's got a chance to return it, save for a fine downfield tackle by a veteran, Guido Merkins. While we have a moment, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for this NFL update. Steve, the Vikings struck first against the Chicago Bears. They had kicked the field goal. Steve Fuller then drove the Bears down and from the 30 threw this touchdown pass to Willie Galt. And the Bears now lead the Vikes 7-3. Back to Bird. All right, Brent. And, of course, Chicago can win its first division title since 1963 with the victory in that game today. We have no score. That was a 58-yard punt by Brian Hansen. Montana, zero of six. Seven. Tipped by Ricky Jackson. I'll tell you, Tony Elliott, number 99, he had everyone. He had Whitney Paul, everyone that was in, in Montana's face that time. Real interesting. They brought in Nehemiah 83 in tight, took him downfield. He was man on man. He beat his man. Boy, I mean, beat him badly. Good thing they had the pass rush on. Joe's forced out, unable to get the ball to him. Elliott, number 99, now in a nose tackle for Derlin Moore, just activated this week, has had some real severe personal problems and was cleared to play by the National Football League just five days ago. Montana, handoff Wendell Tyler, Jackson chasing. He gets by Jackson, can't get by the next man, picks up three yards. Russell Gary, number 20, made the tackle. There's Tony Elliott assigned welcoming him back from North Texas State down his third year. Had a brief you know, tussle with drugs know, and some other problems. And that was really, you know, Vern, Vern, Vern Phillips is the kind of guy that says, look, you know, I'll give you every opportunity in life to change your life and get it straight. He gave this young man a chance when everybody else is kind of down on him a little bit. He's coming into this football game and he's kind of a new lease on life, playing well. Blitz, third and six. Screen pass, incomplete. really unusual, Terry, for Montana to have these kind of problems. Well, there are a lot of reasons for Joe having a, being an 0 for 7. Number one, you got a defense that's in his face, constantly harassing him. He's a type of quarterback. It's a, it's a rhythm passer. One, two, three, kick the football. I mean, throw the football. And that's the way they have run their offense. We're going to get a roughing the kicker penalty now. But that's how they're doing. Today they're coming in, they're blitzing everyone, and Joe's not able to have just that little bit of time, Vern, it needs for him to hit these guys. They're open, and in time we're going to see some changes, and if they don't change their defense to counteract that, they'll start hitting those passes. Jerry, Mark Bright, the referee, threw the flag, roughing the kicker. 49ers will get it back. They came. Personal foul, running into the kicker, number 92, defense, first down. Not much question they got him. James Haynes, number 92, as you see, he's going to come in right there, flying in. Hmm, hmm. That's a pretty good job. Uh, you know, I, I used to say you couldn't act, but he barely caught his foot in his leg. Then the kicker rolled over, hit him on his leg, got the penalty. Hey, Runniger did do a good job of getting the heck out of there. <laughs> well, you know, they, they no longer let the, allow these kickers to, to go through all this fake and all this good stuff to get them in Hollywood. At that time, that was a good call. 13.50 to go first half, no score. Montana for the ninth time. First completion. Wendell Tyler on the screen. 
Jim Kovach makes the first contact. There's a fumble. Scramble, 49er ball. I tell you, Tony Elliott, number 99, boy, he really busted. Came in there and hit that football and knocked it loose. You know, once, once again, we're seeing them come out, blitzing on first down, anticipating that the 49ers are going to throw the football. We're going to watch it again. There's Joey, comes out a little, little half fake there. Not much wood, not trying to fool him. There's everybody coming. Bruce Clark, 75. Pops the ball out here. Tyler has it. Now we're going to see Whitney Paul, 51, come. There's Dr. Kovach hits him now. 99, Elliott knocks the ball out. There it's laying on the ground. 49ers recover it. Gee, that thing's going everywhere. Derek Harmon, rookie from Cornell, is in the backfield now on second down and five from the 50. Roger Craig gets the handoff. Spilled after a gain of three. And he might, as a matter of fact, have gotten four, which would make it third and one. Third Winston, big, big interception Monday night. Did a little high-stepping as he <laughs> ran you know, into the end zone against Pittsburgh. The, the Steelers traded this guy, number 56, Dirt Winston, who, who went to Arkansas. They said he, that he, you know, he couldn't play the pass defense that well. What, he's, he's intercepted two passes this year and then and returned both of them for touchdowns and one of them against Pittsburgh. And I asked him, was it, did it make him happy? And, of course, he said it did. No. Winston. We're going to watch it again, number 56 in the center of your screen. Joe turns around, hands the ball deep to Craig, and Dirk just fills right up inside. No one touched him. Boy, he made a fine play that time. Max Runniger is on the kick. No pressure this time. Good kick by Runniger. Jitter Fields will let it bounce, and it goes out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. So Runniger twice today has pinned the 40 the Saints inside the 10. The NFC West, they've given up an average of only 15.3 points per game. Well, you know, if you can't score and your offense can, then you're going to win a lot of football games, and that graphic certainly illustrates that. Usually works that way. <laughs> First and 10. Rodgers. You know, the thing you're going to see, Ricky Ellison, number 50, making, a, making the tackle, the, the, the Saints have a, a, an offense attack that's very similar to a lot of teams with big linemen. They call it position blocking burn, where they'll come out, and the linemen will just engage in your face, the defensive lineman's face and the linebackers, and just drive, just try to push them, get the ball to a great tailback, and let him just pick their hole, as opposed to the team I played for, where we had the little small guards, real strong, where we would pull them, trap, sweep, and powers and all that. This team doesn't do that. They just like to come out, get right in your face, and let those great running backs pick their hole. See what they do now on second down and seven. Rodgers on a sweep to the right. Cuts it back, gets out near the 12-yard line. It'll be third and long. Mario Clark had a tough afternoon last week in the win over Tampa Bay. He replaced Ronnie Lott when Dwight Hicks went back to safety and Carter and DeBerg picked on him throughout the day. They kind of a quiet day for him so far today. Oh, it's still early. They're still kind of feeling their way around. I'm sure Mario... Well, maybe he's happy. I don't know. I, I, I would think that a competitor would probably say, hey, I wish these guys would throw a few. I'd like to kind of pick off a couple, you know, and kind of redeem myself. But, hey, it'll heat up over there, Bernard. I guarantee you before this game's over. No score in the game. Third down and four, New Orleans. I know if I was out there, I'd heat it up over there. Todd is two out of three. See if he does. Got the old blitz on. Oh, boy. Todd Shell, number one draft choice from Brigham Young. I tell you, this is, you know, this is just a, a quarterback, when he calls these plays, he knows that they send these linebackers, that there's a responsibility there for the backs and the guards to pick them up. Todd Shell, number 90, boy, he just comes flying right across there. You see number 22, Tyrone Anthony, try to pick him up, but it's too late. He lost him, evidently. Todd sacked. Blitzing, that, you know, that's what we're seeing. We're just seeing blitzing. Everybody's blitzing. They're blitzing everything they got. That'll bring on Brian Hansen, nine and a half yards deep in the end zone. Dana McElmore waits for it at midfield. Hansen with kicks of 51 and 58. This is his poorest of the three. And it will be returned to the 36-yard line. Tackle made by Jenner Field, so Hansen felt a little bit of pressure, a 45-yard kick with a 13-yard return. 
gentlemen, New Orleans, Louisiana, Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw, no score. Missed 47-yard field goal by Ray Wersing on the opening series of the game. A missed 54-yard field goal by Morton Anderson on New Orleans' deepest thrust. But now the 49ers with Joe Montana having an ineffective first half at the Rickley field position at the St. Paul 37-yard line. Halfback pass, Derek Harmon, incomplete. Intended for Dwight Clark. Little, little razzle dazzle there. This is twice on first down that we've seen him. You're going to see that 87 Dwight Clark is wide open. Little pass out there to him. It's too late. 49. Frank Watlett comes over, knocks the ball away. It's kind of interesting. We had a little reverse on first down. Now we had a little toss pitch. Get outside, fire the football. Hmm. On second down and 10, Montana brings him up. He is one of nine for five yards, and the wave starts in the background. Caught. Freddie Solomon might have enough for the first down. You're going to see this time, this is a good job by Joe. He hangs in there, does a fine job of getting the ball off. 87 Clark's outside. Weimer, see the, notice the inside technique. That tells you now it's man coverage. He goes outside, comes back inside, wide open. Number 88, Freddie Solomon. Man for man, inside one, off on the other. Kind of interesting. And it'll be third and short. I tell you, Montana did a good job of standing his ground and getting that ball off that time. Fred Quillen comes up over the ball. Third, less than a yard. No score in the game, first half. Have to see. Are you a believer in John Madden's left foot, right foot spot there? <laughs> John. No, I'm not, because Chuck Noll used to try to get me to do that. You know, quarterbacks stand there, and the first step they take when they're going to throw, they should turn. If you're right-handed, keep the left foot firmly planted and pivot with the right. I never could do that. Left foot always went forward. I never could do that. I guess I just really don't have, uh, what do you call that, the... I think it's called coordination. Well, I, yeah, I guess maybe that is. Well, I'm bow-legged. Maybe that has something to do with it. At least I had the chance to do that, you little short thing. You never... Well, maybe they blitzed you a lot. That's what happened. That's it. I got, I got blitzed <laughs> in kindergarten. First down. First down. 49ers trying to take advantage and go in for the first score of the first half. Earl Campbell standing by Bum Phillips. Interesting, he said Friday afternoon in the locker room, the one thing I'm never going to do because I love Bum Phillips too much is to complain about my current status. Oh. But he's not real pleased. First and 10, 49ers, 8.40 to go in the half. No score. Montana, blitz is on, fires short, caught by Earl Cooper, first down. You know, what happens in this football game is these two teams go at one another. You feel one another out and kind of get a scheme for what they're trying to do. It seems like now the 49ers say, look, they're going to blitz, and our play action will drag our tight ends over. We'll put both receivers on one side and get a key as who's off and who's pressing. They're doing a good job now protecting him against the blitzes and popping that ball to the guy that's open. Raiders looking for a wild card spot after three losses in a row. They won last week, and Seattle still leading by 10 over Denver. And a Seahawks victory would tie those two AFC Western Division leaders at the top. Chicago leading Minnesota 7-3. We have no score in the game. First and 10, 49ers. Roger Craig into the arms of Jim Wilkes. Roger Craig, an interesting kid, played quietly at Nebraska behind Rozier. Early in the year, Vern, the Saints were beaten constantly, especially in the opening, opening game when Riggs rushed for 202 yards because when a running back like Craig here would stretch it out to the left and then they would cut back against the flow of the defense. No longer do the Saints over-pursue. They keep people behind these running backs to take care of the flow, take care of the cutback, as you can see it there. Terry, they have been susceptible to the rush in their losses. In four of the six games, New Orleans has lost. They've given up over 200 yards on the ground. Here's Montana on second and eight. Face of the blitz. Caught at the five. Down at the one. Wendell Tyler. You know the subtle old thing, boy, if it works, try, 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 and do it, and do it again. Well, you're going to see a fine job this time. Montana comes out, same play action. Saints get into that man coverage again. Wilkes pushing up inside. Whitney Paul coming. They pick the blitz up. Joe stands his ground, a lot of cool, and fires the ball out there to Wendell Tyler. Does a fine job. Dirk comes over and puts the claps on him. But, you know, they're doing a good job. Looks like they found out they can cross underneath these people and get guys wide open. 
Six and a half to go first half. First touchdown threat we've had today. Back to the eye for the 49ers trying to go 12 and 1. Frank Wadlett, number 49, led the charge on Wendell Tyler. Whitney Paul was there to help. Here's a kid who was a free agent from Kansas who really, really wanted to play football. So you're going to see that you're looking right at Den Dennis Winston's back. And there's Whitney Paul. I mean, Wattlett, Frank Wattlett, 49. He sees the play. He comes inside. He reads it. And boy, watch this. Just steps right up inside and just decks Wendell Tyler right there behind the line of scrimmage. Actually knocked him back two or three feet. Second and goal. Touchdown. That is the sixth rushing touchdown for Roger Craig in 1984. So field position wound up costing New Orleans as the 49ers go 36 yards and Craig gets it. And the new 49er attack, which features their running attack, once again, they tried to stretch things out, cut them back up inside. Craig did a good job. Bruce Clark, 75, stopped them, but too late. Watch it again. You can see their people pull, their guards pull, air 68. Pulls, and then these guys read that cut back inside. Boy, it's a good job. Pershing has been perfect with the extra points this year, and he is again. So with five minutes and 43 seconds remaining in the first half, the San Francisco 49ers draw first blood. It has given the 49ers a 7 nothing lead. 5.43 to go in the first half. Took eight plays and four minutes and three seconds to go the 36 yards after the relatively short punt by Brian Clark. But it's really been Max Rudiger's punting for the 49ers that has kept New Orleans pinned back inside. Well, he's done an outstanding job, and once again on the other side, Hanson's kicks have actually, you know, he's out kicked his coverage. Here's the kick by Wershing, taken by Jitter Fields at the 10. He's a tiny Mike, 5'9, 170 yards. It has been a goofy year in the NFC East. On Thursday, the Cowboys, having been humiliated by Buffalo, bounce back and thrill their home fans with a three-point win over New England. Today, the Giants score with time running out. They stay tied with Dallas at 8-5. St. Louis wins on a field goal from O'Donohue with no time left. They're only a game back. And Washington keeps it there, up, ups its record to 8-5. And now, after today's game, three-way tie with St. Louis only a game back and Philly not out of it. Though they have lost Ron Jaworski for the year with a broken leg. Jimmy Rogers and Earl Campbell are the new running backs now for the New Orleans Saints. Todd to throw. Great protection. Deep. Jeff throws. Well, Eric Wright told us yesterday. I hate playing against guys like Jeff Groth and Pat Philly. Why, why do you think? Well, he said he hated playing against guys like that because they didn't have the overburning speed and that he found himself, you know, kind of falling, kind of, you know, getting in a lull. This time, as you can see, Jeff Groth does a fine move, and the guy he's going to beat is number 29, Mario Clark. Look at this. This is a fine throw. Actually, this is good coverage. That's just an outstanding pass that time and good concentration by Groth to catch that ball. But isn't it amazing that they go back and go after Mario Clark? Eric Wright made the tackle after Clark had been beaten first down at the 38. Double tight end set with Brenner and Junior Miller. Campbell back in the lineup. Two-step drop, quick flip in the left flat to the 34-yard line. That's one of those passes that is that they use as a as a running pass. You know the the 49ers offense used to use the pass to run. That was their running game. This is like a running. Just picked up four yards. That's all they wanted. Next week in the NFC, Dallas will be at Philadelphia. The Giants and Jets in the battle for bragging rights of New Jersey, St. Louis, and New England. Tampa Bay versus Green Bay. The 49ers are on the road again at Atlanta, New Orleans at Los Angeles. Terry and I will be out there for that game, and Detroit will be at Seattle. So a lot of key matches in that NFC East next week on CBS. Second down and six, Todd, four of five. George Rogers back in one. Seven nothing. The fake reverse to Tyrone Anthony. Todd in trouble. Balls up. Good oh, big move. He's got it. He can get on down. <laughs> well, how 
How about that? Well, they had a little razzle-dazzle here. They were trying to hit Hobie Brenner down the middle, came out with fake, fake the reverse. Todd Stepp, notice he's looking for Hobie, a little pressure. He moves outside, and then, and then 55, Jim Farnhorse, he gives a little pump fake there, gets him out of his shoes, and then Stucky, I mean, not, not Stucky, but 78, and Manu Tuiasa Sopo chases him out of bounds. Kind of reminds Todd of his days back at Alabama when he did a lot of that stuff. 433 to go in the half. George Rogers, the lone setback. He gets the pitch out and hits left. Not much there. Cut back to the 15. And he struggles to the 13-yard line. Rogers already with 12 carries for 57 yards. Young man who got that 102-yard effort in the season opener against Atlanta and hasn't really been close since. Well, he really hasn't. You know, a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that their offensive line has not played together this year that much. Edelman and Clark are back at guard and tackle on the left side, but there's a new center in heel and court being out and Oubre being in at right guard number 66. Lewis Oubre getting his first start in the last two months playing for Steve Ford, who's out with a hamstring pull. Blitz is threatened by the 49ers and Todd changes at the line. Rodgers eludes the tackle and gets inside the 10 of the 9. And that might be enough to move the chains. In talking to, to uh, Dwight Hicks yesterday, he told me that when we get out number 22, as you see him there, you got a first down, Vern. When we get down in this era, you can look for us to blitz a lot. They said that their defensive coordinator likes to use a lot of multiple defenses, whether they need them or not, just to confuse the offense, just to give them a lot of different looks. That time they came out, faked the blitz, stayed in their man coverage, and good running by Rodgers got the first down. Rodgers out, Campbell back in, so they're back to the rotating offense now. First and goal, New Orleans, 322 to go first half, 7-0, San Francisco lead. for the audible that Todd is calling right now. He'll have to run it. And Mano Tuiasasopo makes the tackle. Well, that time he was trying to go outside, pick on Dwight, on Eric Wright, number 21, to find cornerback for the 49ers. No way going that time. He just smothered growth, number 86. Richard went to him, had him, but he couldn't get the ball to him. Did a good job of coverage. Gosh, I always did like it down here. It's just so much fun. Ten yards, you don't have a lot of room. You can get guys all over the field. Really, you can you can dictate to that defense and get them just as confused as they try to get you. I thought it was supposed to be tougher down in here. Well, it is, but it's also a lot of fun because it is tough. Second and goal. Games are being played. Todd back, drills it. Intercepted, incomplete. Incomplete. He had his eye on Hobie Brenner from the time the ball was snapped. Well, Carton Williamson, number 27, also had Brenner. You're going to see, they get in this two tight end. You see Junior, Hobie lines up in a wing, comes downstairs. He goes inside on Carton Williamson, 27. He has help inside with Hicks, 22. No way that ball could have been completed. Now we get the situational substitution as uh, the 49ers, George Seifert, the defensive coordinators, sending in eight new players. And Tyrone Anthony and Reggie Lewis. Well, now you get a shot to see what the quarterback's going to look, but you look at it from the defensive side. Look at him, everybody moving around, trying to confuse him, faking blitzes. Half roll by Todd. Lobs the ball. Oh. Incomplete growth. Boy, he had him. Sure did. He had him. They're going to watch again. They move this pocket outside to give Richard some time. Stretches out the defense. He sets up. Jeff Growth, number 86, comes wide open. Richard takes a little off the ball to get it over the linebacker. And by doing that, it forces him to overthrow Growth and lead him too much. Look at Jeff, 86. He's wide open. Number 28's trailing him. No way Tom Homo can cover that guy. Boy, they needed that. As a result of which, Morton Anderson tries his second field goal today. He's now 19 of 25 for 1984. And the New Orleans Saints are on the board with two minutes and 18 seconds to go in the first half. They now trail 7-3. Nine yards in nine plays. They get the field goal from Morton Anderson. Take a look at the silver medal shot putter right there in the right-hand side of your screen. That's Michael Carter, rookie nose guard. Anderson all the way out of the end zone. Makes special teams play easy. 
We've got 2.13 to go in the first half. Time out on the field back in just a second. Earlier this season, Keith Fonhorst got poked in the eye as a result of which he's wearing a plastic eye protector while he plays at right tackle for the 49ers. It got to make things a little tough. He's going against Bruce Clark this afternoon. Oh, what a little bit of trickery that was. The delay play to Roger Craig. You know, with everyone keying on the quarterback and they see they see Montana Vern go back and say, wow, look at this, a pass. He's dropping straight back. You're going to see it again, folks. Joe's going to go past the fullback. Notice he goes past Craig and shovel the old shuffle lateral. I guess you'd call that back in front. Shoot, we ran that thing in Pop Warner Ball. That's the last time I've seen that play. Did it you worked. Did Maybe you? that's why they didn't cover it. it they didn't, hadn't seen it in 20 years. I'll bet Louisiana Tech ran that yesterday in their win over Mississippi Valley State. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, they probably invented it. <laughs> They won at 66 to 19. I'd like to remind you that next Saturday, CBS Sports will present the 85th Army Navy game from Veteran Stadium, Philadelphia. Army bound for a bowl for the first time in the Academy's history. It's always an exciting and pageantry filled day when these schools renew what has to be one of college football's strongest rivalries. Naval Navy leads the series 40 37 and 7. That's at noon Eastern here on CBS. And then the next day, or rather followed by that same day, not the next day, next Saturday. <laughs> We'll have college football basketball doubleheader. First, the Army Navy game, and the Oklahoma Sooners against the Illinois Fighting Illini, live at 3:30 Eastern Time. Illinois now second in the country behind Georgetown. First down, 10. 49ers with a 7-3 lead. Two minutes to go. Roger Craig. Tackle is missed from behind. He picks up 13 yards. Update you from around the NFL, the late game, Chicago, a seven-point lead over Minnesota, 10-3 in the second quarter. And the Raiders have extended their lead over Indianapolis to 14. First and 10, 7-3 here with the 49ers leading. And off to Tyler, and he gets to the 50-yard line. Broncos have come back to tie up Seattle 10-10 before 74,000-plus at mile high. We'll have all the scores and highlights coming up at the half with Brent and Herb. We've got 128 to go in the first half. Timeout has been called on the field. The 49ers lead it 7 to 3. Had a dream game Monday night with two fumble recoveries, a pass interception, and a sack. He's the NFC Player of the Week. But he said, told us, he's going to have a tough day all day long against Keith Von Horst for the 49ers, well, he, Terry. The reason he said that, he said that Keith does not give him a, a tip-off with his feet as to whether or not it's a run or a pass. And, you know, that's what those guys are looking for. That edge is going to help them defeat the play. Montana has hit five in a row, make it six, as he connects with Dwight Clark at the 49, at the 40-yard line. And Dave Waymer made the tackle. You know, Bruce, Blue, Bruce Clark, you know, he, although he was Defensive Player of the Week last week, you know, Jim Wilkes was the Defensive Player of the Week the week before that. So these Saints obviously are playing good, solid defense. Bill Ring caught and dropped, six-yard loss. Oh, Whitney Paul just did a great job of guessing that time. He beat the back and was able to scoop over. I mean, Ricky Jackson, 57, and he was able to leap over and make the tackle for a loss. So timeout is called half 7-3. San Francisco leads New Orleans. The touchdown run from Roger Craig, countered by a field goal from Morton Anderson, the only scoring we've had. Second down, 16. Draw play. Wendell Tyler breaks it loose. Looked like that ball might slip out for just a moment. Dan Tyler has had problems with fumbles this year. He fumbled twice last week. Frank Warren made the tackle. They're going to have to hurry, and they're going to have a shoulder pad exposed. Third and seven. Montana lobs it out. Man is there. Incomplete. So the string of six consecutive passes ends as Freddie Solomon couldn't catch up with the ball. You know, as you look at Bill Walsh, he has a list, Bernie. He says, you know, I go by that list. I have 20 plays. I'm going to use it. And I just asked her, I said, you, I mean, you're really trying to tell me that you're going to run 20 plays no matter what? And he said, no. He says, one or two in a row, then we had third, we had situational plays where we get third and short, we go to our third and short list, third and long, go to our third and long list, then we go back to number three play on first and second. So it really doesn't just work 20 plays in a row. Wersing is 0 for 1. He'll try this one from 54 yards away. Short. Won't get there. It's been a day for long field goal attempts. Well, you know, they expected a defensive battle. They came, they came into this football game saying this is one of the hardest teams to beat in their home stadium. And as the score indicates, 7-3, an explosive offense against a great defense. 
today we're seeing that battle happen. Seven to three. 54 yarders may be the answer for this day is over with. Worsing is 0 for 2. The Saints get the ball back with 35 seconds to go. Game is sold out in New Orleans, but it did not sell out in time for the blackout to be lifted. We've got 71,000 plus who are here, however. Watch Ray again. Just falls short. Pitcher Todd in the face of a four man rush. He's going to have to hurry. Sacked by Jeff Stover, who was just activated last week. There was so much commotion made over the re signing of Fred Dean that they kind of slipped Jeff Stover back on the active roster. He had had knee surgery 10 weeks ago, and Bill Walsh said he's the most consistent defensive player they've got. Well, he is. You know, they. They got him back, so he's he's got his people coming back. He's getting the drive for the playoffs. They've already got the wild card, card spot sold up. There's over number 72 going off. But he really is high on number 72. Saints this year. John Hill did not start the season as starting center, but he's in there now over the ball. 28 seconds to go. Screen pass by Todd to Tyrone Anthony. Oh. All right, 16 seconds to go. You know, it's it's amazing. We're going to see the Saints try to get with, go with a hurry-up offense, but nine times out of ten, you see screens when guys are downfield and it looks like they're going to get big yardage, and one guy just slithered through all that mess and just disrupts the screen. That's what happened that time. Here it is again, another screen. Now you got a, now you got Tyrone Anthony. Now that's a good play. Now he gets out of bounds first down. And uh, time so, is out. Yeah, now that's, well, it is. It? <laughs> <laughs> Should have done a Doug Flutie. Yeah. <laughs> So there are mixed reviews from the crowd on that last play. A couple of boos mixed in with the cheers. We have reached halftime. I was trying to copy it. Now they're copying it, and he comes to me and says, we're going to the conventional type because we think that that's the offense of the 80s. I about died. Interesting, wasn't it? He's not a big fan of the H-back yeah. offense, which is kind of a rage now. He said the H-back is about run its course, and he said it's going to be out, outdated another year or two. Ray Wersing will kick it deep to either Jitter Fields or Tyrone Anthony. This will be Jitter Fields, a rookie from Texas. Puts his head down and gets it out near the 21-yard line. Fairly even ball game reflected in the stats. 7-3 at this point. San Francisco leads it. They have 11 first downs and 130 yards rushing to 89 for New Orleans. Total yards 139 to one, uh, 190, not 191. There you go. Uh, took me a while to spit that out. <laughs> and the time of possession is in favor of New Orleans. The big difference really was the punting of Max Runniger because field position. San Francisco averaged in the first half getting the ball 68 yards away from the Saint goal line. The Saints were getting it on their own 19 yard line on an average first down. Here's Rodgers. Wings it around the left side and picks up uh, about five yards. Well, he's running on his best side. He's got Kelvin Clark 68 at tackle, and Brad Edelman 63 at his left guard. I think that's wise. Get that ball out to your best running back, Rodgers. Let him go with those two big guys on the left and see if they can get some yardage out of it. And they did. Take a look at Kelvin Clark. He's grown a beard. I said Friday, when did you start that? I said after they won in Cleveland, and he's going to keep it going as long as they win. And I grew more beard, shaved off more beards. I did everything in the world to try to help these. A little winning streaks that we used to have. Didn't any of them help us win, though? I've seen you with three mustaches this fall. <laughs> Here's Brenner going left. Rogers near the 30 yard line. I'll tell you, that was kind of an interesting. They had the guard, left guard, Brad Edelman, 63, leading up inside, leading kind of a, a lead blocker for Rogers. And, and Rogers, he neglected to follow the left guard. We want to watch it again, folks. Brenner goes in motion there. See guard, see Edelman, 63, lean up inside, and then Rogers. Cuts back behind him instead of following him outside. Dwayne Board, 76, made the stop. Now, there's an interesting fellow, 76, Dwayne Board. You know, we used to have him in Pittsburgh and let him go. And he is a great defensive end. Came here as a free agent. He didn't here know being that. San no, I didn't. Third down, two. Growth in motion. Rodgers going to the left side again. Breaks the tackle for the 40 yard line, first down. That's his 16th carry. You know, 
know, in today's day of times, you have specialists for everything. In the bottom right of your screen, you're going to see 74, Fred Dean. Why they use him primarily on passing situations? Look at this. This is a run, and Fred's blocked inside by a tight end. Nowhere near the, near the play, 38 Rodgers gets a first down. Now they specialize with defensive end. There he is. He's staying in the game this time. 74, Fred Dean. First down and 10. Mean Fred Dean. He's only, what, 17 and a half sacks behind Gaston? Into the flat. Oh, boy. Oh, T Keena Turner just did a super job that time. This is one of those things, Vern, that you and I have seen all year long where, where teams come out and flare a back that side, take the wide receiver, take him downfield, and hook him. And the quarterback comes out, reads the linebacker. If he drops off, then they drop the ball off to the back with the guard and tackle pulling for a screen. If he comes up tight, as Turner did that time, then you go to the hook. That time, Turner did a good job of disguising it, got Todd to force the ball into Rodgers, then came up and made the play. Tyrone Anthony comes in, and Rodgers will get a rest. It'll be second down and 17. I remember when we were in San Diego this summer, and the 49er folks said, Keena Turner is going to have an all-pro year. Looks like it. He looks good. Todd back to throw. Four-man rush across the middle. Tipped away. Incomplete at the 40-yard line. Intended for Brenner. And Todd, Todd Shell. Shell. I'll tell you what, Fred Dean came into the league out of Louisiana Tech, one of your powerhouses, folks. In the center, top right of your screen, there's 74. He had a nickname, Mean Fred Dean. Now, you think they don't respect him. Look at this. Brad Edelman, 63. Hill, the center, 62. And then the left tar tackle, Clark, Kelvin Clark, 68. All three people put a shot on, on Dean that time, trying to slow him down. Now, that's respect. Now, let's see what they do on third and 17, because he'll really put his ears back. Oh, Brad, you remember uh, Brad Colby used to get that kind of respect. That's at Northwestern. Uh, remember that third and 17 Todd lets it go incomplete mm. Renner was open at the 40 and Todd overthrew it well the fans are coming down got a quarterback alive today even those that are in the Hall of Fame they don't hear booze they did a good time that, that, that time of just holding guys out got Todd pressured a little bit he moved around he tried to get the ball in the hole but down the middle he was covered overthrew it when you hear the boos, does it make you angry or frustrated? Well, it hurts my feelings. <laughs> it, it used to make me mad. Then as I got older, it hurt my feelings. I'm kind of sensitive, you know. <laughs> Brian Hansen on the punt for the fourth time today. Tied for second in the NFL. Won't hurt his average with that one, but again, it will be returned from the 20 by Dana McLemore. Oh, that's not good four. coverage there. Tackle is made by number 92, James Haynes. That's a 47-yard kick for the rookie from Sioux Falls. Pressed by what is going on. I'll tell on. you what, he, he is mad right now. He's so doggone mad. Look at it. He could care less. I'll, I'll tell you what he'd like to see right now. A snowstorm. <laughs> Come on up with us to Colorado. He'll see one or two. First and ten. You see a blizzard up there. Earl Cooper in motion. Montana back to throw. Whitney Paul coming after him. Montana wings it out. Incomplete. I tell you, Waymer did a fine job that time. Just did an outstanding job on Solomon. Dave Waymer, number 44, is from Charlotte, North Carolina. He played high school football against Dwight Clark. Waymer played for West Charlotte. Dwight Clark, number 87, the all-pro wide receiver, played for Geringer High. Asked them both about that, and Clark said, yeah, I remember. We were undefeated my junior year, and they waxed us. But Clark said uh, also to say hi to the folks in Charlotte because Geringer High is back in the playoffs for the first time since he left. All right, good luck out there, Geringer. Second down and 10, draw play. Wendell Tyler, number 26. Tell me a little bit about, you said something about Waymer was a wide receiver? Yeah, he was a wide receiver, quarterback, and safety at Charlotte High School, West Charlotte. All. Then he went to Notre Dame, where he played with Joe Montana and caught four passes from Montana in one of the most scintillating games in Cotton Bowl history in an ice storm. They were down 34 to 12, and Montana led Notre Dame to a 35-34 win with Waymer's help over Houston. It all comes around eventually, doesn't it? It's amazing. Third down, Montana to throw into the flat, caught Ricky Jackson chasing. Roger Craig with a first down at the 40-yard line. Well, this is something that they like about Craig. Not only is he an outstanding running back, but the guy has great hands, developed good moves. This is unusual for a back coming out of Nebraska where they feature the running attack and blocking of fullbacks. But it, once again, he was isolated man for man. They utilized his talents. He beat the linebacker, got outside, popped. 
right in there first down I love what Keith Fonhorse said yesterday about Roger Craig when he came in as a rookie what oh he loved it. he said hey you know this guy's not like most rookies even Jack Reynolds liked him he's Hacksaw said gee this is really a great guy unusual for a rookie he was humble and, and nice and worked hard first down and ten seven to three ten thirteen to go third quarter Wendell Tyler out of the tackle and if he had beaten one more he might have rumbled for another twenty five give you an idea of how the running game has improved with the drafting of Roger Quigg and the acquisition of Wendell Tyler as they're going to hurry and go with, without a huddle in 82 the strike year they averaged 82 yards per game worse than the league now 152 yards per game play fake Montana back almost had it as Waymer was caught you know they're doing a lot of you, you notice how they're coming up and setting quick what they're doing is trying to keep, keep people from coming in with these specialized people coming in with their pass rush come in with their fifth defensive back they've got a pass they want against four defensive backs so they line up quickly now you got third and one you had second and one they come out with a little play action trying to get Weimer to settle over there then hit the quick pass Montana would just held it just a split second more by golly he had him wide open for six Derlin Moore on the bench with an ankle injury and Tony Elliott just activated has gone the distance in the second half of nose guard now a five man front for New Orleans on third and one they'll come left and get it fumble that's the tenth fumble for Tyler this year but San Francisco does manage to recover Frank Wadlett banging the artificial surface in frustration you know we hadn't really said a lot about Bubba, Bubba Paris number 77 to find left tackle for the 49ers or their left guard John Ayers but all these guys have done a fine job today but you know, they're asked to do so much not only are they asked to, to power block and pull on sweeps also they're asked to, to set up screens and get out front of a lot of things and they're doing a good job and the thing I like about this attack is they go right and they go left they just don't feature things to one side first and ten got him Boy, this is a great throw. Freddie Solomon first down at the 19-yard line. This is the old, the old cover two, or what Steelers would call a cover two, two deep zone. They come out with play action again. As you see Montana, he'll come out, he'll turn around, open up to the halfback. Wendell Tyler, 26, sets real fast, and then fires the football with great timing before 20. Russell Geary, the strong safety, can get over in that area. That's Russell Geary's territory. He's supposed to be there. Good job by Montana. So it's Gary there. It's not Waymer's fault on that play. No, absolutely not. That he expected not his the fault. deep help and exactly. didn't get it. Exactly. Very good, Vern. I'm learning. <laughs> it's taking time, but the old Scandinavian is picking it up. Montana into the end zone, incomplete, intended for Clark. Now we've seen so many times Montana get out, get outside of the pocket, and then hit the big plays. This is something that very few quarterbacks in, today, in today's modern football are able to do. We're going to watch Dwight Clark, number 87, run his route. Here he is on Dave Weimer, number 44. Look, notice how he squatted down. Now look, Weimer gets inside, shucks him to the shoulder pads, trying to get him out of rhythm. He comes inside, the ball's not there. He says, "Whoops, Joe's in trouble." Oh, Dave comes in front, down behind him. I go. Now I'm wide open. There's the pass over my head. Mm, next time, but they do this so well, and Montana's outstanding on the run, throwing the football. Second down, ten. How in the world can you get real low like that at a cornerback and jab a big old it, tall It's, it's amazing to me. It Weimer is. gets lower than any cornerback I've ever seen. Second down and 10. Montana is 8 of 20. Boy, this is just super defense by Weimer that time. Now, Montana saying that was interference, but I'm going to tell you, they both went up. They both went for the football. Dave Weimer, number 44, got the position, went up inside, and knocked the football down. You know, I've seen things change already the first half. Watch it again, folks. Weimer comes inside, goes up for the football. If anybody brought contact, number 87, Dwight Clark, went into Weimer that time. That's a good call. Third and ten. Well, matter of fact, that wasn't even a call at all, was it? Nope. Boy, he sets low. He sets low. Said he looks. That, that, that makes him not look at the eyes and the face. He looks just at the number of the wide receiver. So maybe Dwight Clark. Watch him scott at the uh, top of your screen. Third and ten. Man's open. Touchdown. Earl Cooper. 
Manny had his guy man for man. Number 20, Russell Gary had Earl, Coop, Earl Cooper, number 89, man for man. They held Waymer up on the outside with a little smash move by 87 Clark. Froze him, and then he had him man for man, had the entire center of the, of the field, and all the deep outside. Boy, that's just a fine throw. Watch it again. Really, the key to this pass, outside of the pass protection, is the fact that Clark was able to keep Waymer from getting outside. See him beat 20, Russell Gary, a fine throw, leads him outside. There's the catch, there's the touchdown. Worsing for the extra point, the touchdown comes with 8.36 to go, third quarter. And the 49er lead is now increased to 14 to 3. We're going to watch the catch again. There it is. You see, right now he's beat. Russell Gurry's behind 89 Cooper. Boy, all you got to do is get the ball there. Good route, good throw. It's six. Now you're going to watch it again. There's the ball floating out there. It leads him to the corner. Can't be intercepted. Nice throw, nice catch, touchdown. Gary comes over. He's got it outside. Now he sets him up and comes over behind him. All you got to do is get it there. And there it is. Got it there perfectly to Earl Cooper from Rice University. 75 yards in 10 plays, 301, and Montana is now 9 of 22. Gets his first touchdown toss of the day. You know, I was going to say, Earl, things that we've noticed have changed is that they've stopped blitzing and gone more to zone coverage. Could be something we've got to keep our eye on later, see if they pick it up themselves. Jitter Fields. Not quite to the 20-yard line. Coming up next Saturday, the Army Cadets against the Navy Midshipmen live at Easter, 12 o'clock Eastern time. That game has moved back to the East Coast and played in Philadelphia. One of the truly great traditional rivalries to wind up the college football season. That's coming up at 12 Eastern time next Saturday. Army bound for a bowl for the first time in its history, and Navy, of course, knocked off then undefeated South Carolina earlier this year. Jimmy Rogers is an injured player down on the field for the New Orleans Saints, number 41. Timeout has been called with 8.27 to go third quarter, and the 49ers have an 11-point lead. After missing his first eight passes, Joe Montana has found the magic again, and his good year continues. He's now thrown his first touchdown toss today. Meanwhile, Richard Todd is having an average day, 7 of 12 for 61 yards. And Terry Bradshaw said at the top of the program, if the Saints have, are going to win, he's got to get the hot hand. He'll try for it now for Junior Miller, but overthrows him. That had to be an almost perfect pass, Terry. Junior Miller is the guy they picked up from Tampa, I mean, uh, from Atlanta Falcons. You know, they kind of gave up on him down there. He had the great rookie year, was rookie of the year, then, and then just kind of fell apart down there, and they, they couldn't understand why. He, they brought him over here to the Saints, got him used to the system, and now they're getting him involved. Last week made an unbelievable catch on Monday night against the Steelers that really brought that game, you know, put, put that game away for him. So 84, they're trying to work him here, work him deep, and unfortunately, he just good coverage. So far, New Orleans has run the ball 22 times with only 13 passing plays and 50-50 for the 49ers. Good balance when you when you go 50-50. That's just good balance. Second and 10. Half roll by Todd. Down to 17. Gosh, you know you you take your pocket and you move it outside to give to give uh, Todd some time to throw the football and work on the secondary. You got Fred Dean back and he's in there and he's going to chase you. And you got to do everything you can to give this give your quarterback time. And but when you get out like that, you kind of you kind of limit the side of the field you're going to throw to. You just cut it in half and keep it to the right side. And when you flood that area with three receivers and all three of them are covered, you have no choice but to run. That's what he had to do. And unfortunately, he got nothing out of it. Fourth sack today for 10 yards for the 49ers on Richard Todd. It'll be third and 11 for Ben is in for the 49ers. 14 to 3, San Francisco. Blitz, five sacks. Now the booze will really rain down. Todd Shell gets his second today. Well, you know, when you get into a passing situation and, and the other guys know you're going to pass, shoot, they just they just pin their ears back, and you see Shell number 90 looking right at you. Todd sees him. He's sitting right there in his face. He sets up. He's not really so much worried about the linebackers, but the golly, Todd Shell did a super job of going around his block and, and making the sack on Todd. But, boy, when you put yourself in a position against a team that is so great at rushing the passer, gosh, you really make it hard on everybody. Ryan Hansen, who's had a good day kicking the ball, does so again, however, and will give up good field position. That's one of those crazy-looking punts there. Yep. McElmore at the 44. Now to the 35. And the tackle made by Jimmy Rogers. 
That was the worst of the afternoon for Brian Hansen, the rookie from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Only 37 yards with seven on the return. And terrific field position for San Francisco. Flag is down. We've had relatively few today. Well, it's all, you know, in a game that's so critical as this game, the fact that they've had the field, field position with the offense that this football team has. Holding number 62. Offense after the ball was kicked. First down after a 10-yard penalty. What I was going to say you, is, is, is when you get the football back in an offense as a quarterback and I walk out on the field and I'm going to be inside my own territory, boy, boy, we're going to have some fun. <laughs> Timeout has been called. Right ankle midway through the second quarter. It's now been encased in ice. He's back on the sidelines, but we'll not see him. I'll tell you what, they're going to miss this guy, 74. Not only an outstanding football player, but a defensive, a, a defensive leader, a team leader in this football team. They need him in the game. How about that gain on first and 10? Average gain of better than eight yards for the 49ers. Montana with a play fake going deep. Ronaldo Nehemiah, Johnny Poe, again with the coverage and uh, was right with him. Second time they've gone deep for the former track star. Chicago en route to its first division championships in 63. With a 20-3 lead, the Raiders still holding on to a 14-0 edge over the Colts out on the West Coast. And Seattle and Denver still tied 10-10. The Broncos have won a club record 10 in a row. And really would be in the driver's seat if they can pull that one out against the Seahawks today. They are tied at 10. Second and 10 as Bum Phillips looks on. We've got 7.06 to go third quarter, 14-3, 49. John Frank, the tight end, starts in motion. Sweep to the left with Tyler getting loose. And Frank Watlett finally holds him out of bounds. At the 28 yard line. Well, that's just that's, that's just good running. That's just boy, the left side of their line, old Bubba Parrish 77 and Ayers 68, Quinlan the center. Boy, they just did a super job of getting him outside and then Tyler with that great moves slithers up in a little seam, runs over a couple of guys, and boy, there you are down them down the field, sitting them down there already in field goal range. His season high was 113 yards rushing against Philadelphia. He's got 110 today on 13 carries. All those great backs kind of make it look easy, don't they? Yeah, they really do. First and 10, 28-yard line. 6.58 to go, third quarter. Audible. Looks like a relay as Solomon relays it out to the right side. Oh, my oh. gosh. Oh, boy. It was a great relay, and the anchor leg was run by Freddie Solomon. You explained to me how he was that wide open. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> Evidently, though, they had worked on it, and, they had, and, and Joe and everyone had, you know, they said, look, if these guys give us a certain look, and we're going to watch it again. He audibles at the line of scrimmage. Now, what happened? The slot guy runs an arrow, and the outside guy comes in on a slant. So they cross one another, almost a built-in pick. Freddie comes inside, and he's wide open. It leaves Russell Gary number 20, just trailing him once again. Boy, that's easy pickings there. That's fun. I think the key may have been easy pickings. Well, yeah. I think there may have been a pick. Wershing. Let's watch it again. We're going to see what Montana's looking at. Makes the audible. He sets up, takes his basic keys. He looks outside the bird right off the bat. Freddie's coming inside. There's a, what's a, a oh, what, wobbly duck coming in there. Anyway, he comes inside. He's wide open. Had the pick on the outside. Wide open. Touchdown. Williams bench. It's very quiet over there. Their team trails 21 to 3 with 6.52 to go third quarter. As Montana has hit for two touchdown tosses in the third quarter. Wershing with a kickoff. Tyrone Anthony from four yards into the end zone. Out of bounds. Inside the 20 at the 17. Terry, let's take a look at the chalkboard and see how Solomon right. got to right, open. Well, here's what Joe, Joe's looking at the slot covering Freddie Solomon. Over top. He's got the tight end who's going to come out and run an arrow. He will commit. Now, he's sitting outside technique. Waymer's out here one-on-one -on, -one on number 87, Clark. Now, when the ball snaps, he's going to come down and turn him. There's nobody there because the safety's out of the picture. And let's run it and show you what happened. All right, see the tight end pulls a weak safety out and strong. Look at there. Russell Gary's got him covered man for man, but he had an outside technique. No help inside. Boy, that's easy pickings. George Rogers, the single setback on first down and 10. New Orleans trailing... 21 to 3. Brock leads the way around the right side. Rogers gets near the 20, then to the 22 yard line before he is spilled. 
And the crowd is not pleased with the conservative play selection. While they boo, let's go to New York and Brent Musburger. Turn watch here as the Bears now have taken complete command of the Vikings. Here comes Todd Bell with an interception for a touchdown. They're going to win their first title of any kind since 1963. Hey, Vern, Bradshaw's doing a great job with that chalkboard. I didn't know how he knew how to diagram play. <laughs> you thought he freelanced every, hey, everything in the huddle. I wish you hadn't said anything about my chalkboard. I'm having a little trouble with my line. I thought you had arthritis in that right oh, hand. <laughs> Oh, I boy. tell you, if he keeps getting hit by Fred Dean, he'll have arthritis himself. And I'm talking about Richard Todd, the Saints quarterback. You know, as much as they try to keep this guy out, it just seems like he's going to find a way to finally get in there and get a sack, get a job in. Watch him again, number 74, Fred Dean. Up top right of your pitcher, folks. He comes outside, just goes right around the tight end. No, no way in the world could he possibly have kept him out that time from making the sack. Junior Miller, number 84, let him get in. That equals the number of sacks that Pittsburgh had Monday night. Six times now Todd has been down, and Fred Dean has his second sack of the year. Now he comes to the left side. And his 11th against New Orleans in five games played against them. Here comes Dean. Todd flushed out of the pocket. Goes deep left side. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. It was intercepted, but Carlton Williamson couldn't control it before he got out of bounds. Sometimes momentum will carry you into dangerous areas. Watch Carlton Williams. Well, you know, maybe he's having a contract problem here. <laughs> but you can see Joe Carl Williamson said, oh, Bill, I'm sorry, but I wanted that extra $500. <laughs> they, say, they say Walsh is a player's coach. Well, hey, that's better wear his pads in. <laughs> Bill's not laughing either. Uh-oh, Mrs. Harrop. I don't know why he's not laughing now. Mrs. Harrop. Brian Hansen on the punt. Danny McLemore back. This game has been a game of field position. The punting game and the quick striking 49er offense on first down. Now once again, they're going to come out of this with decent field position. McLemore to the 40. They're 60 yards away. That was a 50-yard kick. Eight on the return. Jimmy Rogers made the tackle. And we have a flag down. Jerry Mark Bright has been kind of a quiet participant in the game today. Illegal use of the body, tripping number 62 of the receiving team after the kick was in the air. First down. Guy McIntyre was guilty of that. Next Sunday, the NFL today will have a look at the New York Jets, why they moved out of New York to Giants Stadium in New Jersey, and how next Sunday the Jets find themselves the home team playing in their opponent's stadium. Kind of a crazy circumstance, but that happens in the NFL today next Sunday. First and ten, Montana. Wendell Tyler. And with that run, he's going to close in on a season high of 113 yards. Tony Elliott made the tackle. Would you ever believe that you would see a 49er team with Bill Walsh leading, uh, coaching this football team, the offensive genius that he is with Montana, where they use a running attack to set up the passing attack? It's just something I, I honestly didn't ever believe I would see when he said conventional football. By golly, we're seeing it today. You had some interesting observations on his offseason acquisitions I want to get to in just a little bit. It'll be second down and seven. 4.35 to go, 21 to 3, New Orleans lead. It's been all, I mean, uh, San Francisco. It's been, whoops, it had been Kobach. all San Francisco until Jim Kovach got his first sack of the year. Well, they finally got some pressure on him. They got back to doing the things they were doing in the first half, which is sending their linebackers. The key to the football game in the first half was the play of the linebackers on, on, on both sides, 49ers and the Saints. That time, Bobby Johnson, number 34, Jim Kovach put a lot of pressure on Joe Montana, and they got the sack. The key to the game, as you had stated to early, was the fact that they had been getting these second and four, second and sevens, and able to do whatever they want to in their play selection against the Saints. This changes all that. Third down, 21. One of the few times it's been third and real long for San Francisco today. Four-man front for the 49ers. They've gotten only one sack this afternoon. And they were tied for fourth in the NFL with sacks coming in. Montana finds the short man. It'll be fourth down. There's a fumble picked up by Terry Hogue, and he's got a touchdown. 
No, he doesn't. Bring it back. Put it down at the 18. Tell you one thing you don't want to do is get these same stands against you now. Here's the punt by Runniger. It's not a particularly effective kick, but it gets the 49 a roll and is out of bounds the 46. Let's see if the ball or the man was down. We're gonna watch Montana. He's gonna drop back. Good, good set, cross all those guys, giving him plenty of time. Turns around, fires over the middle, hits number 89, Cooper. There he is. There comes the ball. Hey, that's a fumble. That's a fumble. Hold pitches up, picks it up. That's a touchdown. Easy to see it from here, but I'm going to tell you now, this man's not down. He's up. There's the hit. There's the contact. They come inside. The ball is out before he hits the ground. Hold picks the football up, runs into the end zone. By golly, that's a touchdown for the Saints. You know what I bet it was? The official had whistled the ball there. It may have been a quick whistle. First down and 10. Todd going deep. Lindsey Scott. He lost the ball. There is a flag. Scott, the former number one draft choice out of Georgia, is in his third year, has yet to catch a touchdown pass. You know what it looked like, Vern? When Lindsey came out, pass interference, number 29, defense, first down. Mario Clark. When Scott came out and made his out and up move, and this is what this is, and he gets jammed by Mario Clark. Looks like he can't find the football. Where's the football? Looks like he doesn't see it. We didn't see it. Right, now we're going to watch again. He's past the five yards. Can't touch him. Keep your hands off of him. There's a hand right there. There goes the flag. But it looked to me like he had lost the football. He's looking back as if, say, where is the football? Lands right out in front of him. First down on the interference call at the 23-yard line. 331. Old safety blitz. Yep. Todd reads it. Jeff Groth incomplete. You know, this is, this is this old sneak attack where these safeties get down here. And what they do, you're in my territory, buddy. Now, I don't want you in here, and I got to get you out of here. How am I going to do it? I'm going to surprise you by safety blitzes. They do, everyone does it. Everyone has a tendency. 49ers don't surprise Todd that time with a safety blitz. Those 29 yards passing for New Orleans include minus 32 on six sacks. Todd for the day is 7 to 15 for only 61. Tyrone Anthony in the backfield uh, back now. 3.26 to go, third quarter. Quick pitch, rookie from North Carolina. Edelman tries to lead him around the corner. There's a flag in the offensive backfield that may wipe out a potential first down for New Orleans. Holding. Well, he threw the, he threw the flag right, out, right at Kelvin Clark. The flag was laying right by his right hip. Holding number 68, offense, second down. And that is Kelvin Clark. You know, this ain't, the same offensive line has been so banged up all day. Look at Kelvin. I asked him once, I said, you guys really have to be, you know, versatile. He said, Terry, you got to play guard, center, tackle, fullback even around here. He said, one game, I came back to the line of scrimmage and someone had my left tackle spot. So I said, oh, excuse me. I went over to the left guard and someone had my guard spot. Someone had the center. He said, I filled in at right guard. <laughs> That's oh, versatility. That's also hole. good eyesight. That's right. Second down and 20. Into the flat. Tyrone Anthony. Well, Not even back to the line of scrimmage. Mario Clark, Keena Turner did a good job that time of going in and out on the wide flare of that little screen. What that means is the linebacker had him outside. The safety and Clark had him outside. Keena had him inside. He catches the ball. They're going to sandwich him right there. Looks like Todd is getting... Uh, on Mr. Anthony that ran the wrong route or something. Well, hey, look, you know, when you're down uh, 21 to 3 and you're, and, you're, and you're losing yardage on your passing attack, things get a little, get a little friction going there. And these fans want some, they want the, you know, they want these things to win, so they got to get the points on the board. Third, 22, 21 to 3, San Francisco leads. Seven sacks. Fred Dean gets his second. In the game played here in New Orleans last year, Fred Dean had six sacks in that one game alone. 
That's his third of the season since coming back last week. Now you think this guy isn't a, isn't a tough human being? When he was at Louisiana Tech, he went out to he went out to play in a game number 74 as he comes up against Clark Kelvin Clark 68 got him man for man Kelvin's holding him but Fred still gets around and makes a sack on tie the guy was cleaning his gun Vern I'm talking about tough this guy's only six four about 215 he's cleaning his gun and it goes off and shoots himself in the stomach well he says you know the game's got to go on it goes to the game and he puts his jersey on all this stuff is all over his shirt jersey and they said what's wrong he said well I shot myself <laughs> they didn't they didn't let him play. <laughs> I wondered. I wondered what the punchline of the story was going to well, be. Well, that, that's tough. <laughs> that is tough. I, I think it's tough. I mean, in Louisiana, that's tough. You want to talk about James Fenimore Cooper, you the deer slayer, and how you broke your nose? No. <laughs> okay. 21-yard punt. Coming up next week on the NFL Today, Dallas versus Philadelphia, the Giants versus the Jets, St. Louis against New England. And Tampa Bay versus Green Bay. 49ers will be on the road at Atlanta, and the Saints are out on the West Coast against the Rams. Detroit will play at Seattle. So it's going to be a busy day on the NFL today next week. In the meantime, Seattle and Denver now 17-17 as the Broncos have come back to tie that one up. Two-yard run by rookie Gene Lang tied it up with 7-16 left in the third quarter. Saints are a loose bunch. We've spent a lot of time with them this year, and they're a loose bunch. They've, they've, they've overcome a lot of adversity with injuries and whatnot, and they're 6-6. Six and six. This is a very important game for them. It seems like to me that they've got to just, you know, throw everything out after them. Go after the 49ers, everything you have. Well, the third quarter has been costly for them. Two Montana touchdown throws, one to Cooper, one to Solomon. Left side, gain of two. Jim Kovach and Dennis Winston make the tackle. I, I tell you, the 49ers are doing a good job running to the left. We said earlier they mix their stuff up right and left, but, boy, they've had some real good success over Ayers and Paris guard and tackle on the left side. Good support that time by Watlett coming up from free safety and making the stop. Officially, they'll call it second down and seven. And mark the ball at the 23. It was seven to three at the half, the only first half touchdown scored by Roger Craig. Montana drills it to the 34 yard line and that'll be good enough for the first down as Earl Cooper makes the catch or Mike Wilson rather. I tell you that was a good job you know that once again they got that old cover two with those safety split burn Montana came back the linebacker Kovacs didn't get deep in his hook zone area in there and Joe came back saw him and beat him with the football and got the ball in that time for a good completion. You make a lot of signals with your arms. I'm nervous. <laughs> 50 seconds to go and I'm standing back just about another two feet. Uh, take my hands away from me and I can't talk. First down and 10. Montana again on target to the 43. Went Mike Wilson that, with his second straight catch. Went out that time on Waymer. They, you know, the, the Saints are doing a good job of mixing their coverages and Joe Montana's doing a good job also of reading them. That time they had the old zone going one way. Joe went around where Waymer was. He had to man man for man on Wilson completion. This time he'll look left and go back to the right side. Third straight completion on this drive. And that's John Frank, the rookie. He used to work out with this hey, youngster. This, I, this kid, I remember that's a little bitty rascal. He had blonde hair. Back when I had a lot of hair, it was blonde. We about the same colored hair, and everybody thought he was my son. He used to come to the Steelers practice site, and I'd throw balls with him, and he'd tell me he's going to be in the pros one of these days, and how he was going to do this and do that. And by God, if he didn't make it, I had a good talk with him the other day. It's good to see him, and I'm awful happy for him. Second round draft choice from Ohio State. John Frank gets his first, first catch of the day. That's the end of the third quarter with our score, San Francisco 21, New Orleans 3. We now pause for a word from your local station. Now, as the 49ers are about to win their seventh in a row on the road, or eighth in a row, rather, 21 to 3, unless New Orleans can turn it around, we begin the final quarter. Vern Lundquist and Terry Bradshaw here at the Superdome. Montana now 14 of 28 for two TDs. He may have his third. The official falls down but uh, has the presence of mind to get up and signal incomplete pass. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. That's cool ne under pressure. I'll tell you what, Ronaldo Nehemiah, he can't complain about not, you know, guys throwing the football because he has been loose down the middle for about four passes today. The old ref takes a little shot. Hey, go ahead and walk. Give me, get out of your way there. I'm going to do a little flip here and qualify for the Olympics. 
Anyway, Ronaldo's wide open again. Joe just missed him. I guess all that speed mess you. I never had receivers with that kind of speed, but I had great receivers that could catch football. Who was your fastest receiver? My fastest receiver was, uh, gosh, probably Jim Smith. Jim Smith? Probably. Wendell Tyler. And he's now reached a single season high as he goes over 113 yards for the day. Wendell Tyler has gone over a thousand. Keith Fonhorst told us he was the offensive line really takes pride in that, don't they? Well, the fact that this football team has been known as a finessed offense, you, your offensive linemen receive very little recognition when you're involved in a finesse offense. That's picks, screens, a lot of gadgetry. This football team has developed a running attack, as Bill Walsh would say, a conventional attack with two backs. Wendell Tyler got a thousand yards. He said, boy, we take pride in that because now we've proven that we're also great offensive linemen. In the meantime, Frank Wadlett has been injured for the New Orleans Saints. He's back at the 48-yard line. Medical staff is on the field to take care of him, and timeout has been called. Green, folks, is going to get hurt. Now, it's bad enough getting hurt when you tackle people, but when your own teammate, number 73, Frank Warren, says, look, Frank, you didn't get hurt on that play. Bop, steps on his foot with all 275 pounds. Now, gosh, that hurts. He looks like he's going to be all right, but I'd go have a talk with, with Frank Warren, wouldn't you? Wadlett is out. Terry Hogue has taken his place. Terry Hogue returned an apparent fumble for a touchdown that was erased by the officials back in the latter stages of the third quarter. Third and six. Montana in some trouble. Whitney Paul runs him down. Montana gets rid of it. And the pass is incomplete at the 35 as John Frank couldn't quite hang on. Well, this is just great athletic ability once again by Montana. You know, and getting back to Fonhorst, what he said about Joe, he said, you know, the thing that upsets us most is to turn around and say, which one of us got Joe out of the game, got him hurt, which one of us gave him the sack. As you see 71 leaving the field. He said, we dread that. But he said also that 50% of our sacks, he saves us 50% of our sacks just because of his athletic ability. In other words, if they had 50, then they would have had 100 that hadn't been for Joe Montana's great athletic ability. Say that, say that right? Yeah, you got it out. Thank you. Jitter Fields will let it bounce and it'll head for the end zone. Touchback. Tom Homo was the first player down. Max Runniger sends it into the end zone. Timeout has been called. Saints have the ball at the 20. Chances win Super Bowls. And as you can see, most teams, with the exception of Oakland in 81, have ranked right up near the top with their defenses. But I would think that the most important defensive stat, Terry, is still points allowed. Well, I would agree. If you don't if you don't give up any points, you're not going to lose in the football game. And the 49ers are way up on the list there. George Rogers back in the lineup. Pitch out for about five yards. Well, you can't argue with the fans. You, you're, they're booing here, and you, you can't argue with that. They're, it's 13:55 and counting down. They're down 21 to three. And uh, you know, if there's ever been a knock on the offense of the Saints, it's been burned that it's been too conservative. This man has won and throughout his entire coaching career with this type of offense, and I don't think it's anybody's right to justify whether it's right or wrong, but these fans want him to open it up and throw the football right now. Second and five. Play fake. Now they really let go. That's the 19th carry for George Rogers today. Jim Fonhorst, 55, fine job that time of filling inside and doing a good job of, of stuffing that play. Go back to the point you made at the beginning of the year uh, of the telecast about Richard Todd and his experience in New York with that wide open offense and how he's had to adjust. Well, it's, it's extremely difficult as it was, for, it would be for any quarterback to go to a wide open attack and then go to a conservative attack. It takes a lot of time. It takes a special quarterback. And only time will tell whether or not Richard Todd is going to fit into the mold that the Saints want. That is a conservative type ball control offense. He's got the first down. More specifically in your case, could you have fit in to this kind of an offense? No, no, I could not have. And yet you told me earlier in the year you'd have loved to have played for Bum. I love Bum as a human being, and I mean, I'm not saying I'm picking sides here, but as a human being, I like Bum. He's, he's good people. But as far as offense, I am an aggressive, wide-open type, open-minded kind of quarterback, and I believe you win that way. That's my own personal feeling. Tyrone Anthony gets the handoff. Good run. Yes, sir. To the 50. But see that play there, hey, they pick up 16 yards, and that's good blocking, and that's good sound offense. The only problem you have, once again, it's 21 to 3, and of course these people here want to see uh, Todd air out these 30 and 40 yarders. There's nothing wrong with moving the ball down in the next two or three minutes, scoring, getting the ball back, scoring again. 
Nothing they, wrong with that at all. They're going with a hurry up offense with 11.55 to go. Now Todd calls the adjustment. Anthony stays in. He's playing a lot because both Hokie guys, John and Wayne Wilson, are injured. Left side intercepted. This may be six. Todd, Todd Shell, Shell, number 90. Touchdown. And there are no flags down. Every day, every quarterback has days like this, and sometimes, like myself, have more than there. I've had several like this. Richard steps up again. He's been pressured today. Now they're giving him time to throw the football. Just a bad throw. That, hey, nothing wrong with that. Just a physically a bad throw. This guy, number 90, just threw it right in his hands. He makes a good move down here to get in the end zone and score. But, you know, when these things start happening, there's not a dead blame thing you can do about it. You can go over and slap gumbo or dumbo, that dog, and kick water buckets and everything else, but nothing changes. Worsing with the extra point, Shell has two sacks and his first interception today. That is the first defensive touchdown scored by the 49ers this year. It's the second interception for Todd Shell. 49ers have ripped it open to the dissatisfaction of a crowd gathered here, the number 65,177. Dave Wilson, who has played in only one game this year, is warming up on the sideline. We may see him in place of Richard Todd. If so, Todd will wind up the day with 9 of 18 for only 72 yards and his 22nd interception of the year. Or as a team, that is, for New Orleans. It would be Todd's 18th interception this year. Kick return only to the 27-yard line. Tyrone Anthony. It's amazing. Fans love underdogs, Vern. Now you hear the, now you hear the cheers. Wilson is 25 years of age, a former number one draft choice in the supplemental draft out of Illinois. He has played for only a fraction of time against Houston earlier this year, has yet to throw a pass this season. He had two starts last year, and uh, after the loss to Dallas this year, Wilson was elevated to the number two spot behind Richard Todd. That caused Kenny Stabler to decide to retire. And so Todd will probably not see any more action today. Well, this is a good, this is a bad situation for Richard. Richard's been here. This is no stranger to him. I mean, this is, this is an old friend. You say, hey, friend, friend, where you been lately? But a guy like Wilson comes into a situation like this, no pressure on him. Get back there, throw that football, have a good time, and move the football up and down the field. And I'd be surprised if he didn't do that. Not on the first play. It'll be George Rogers for the 20th carry of the day. Chicago extends its lead over Minnesota. Mike Ditka and the Bears are going to be in the playoffs as the NFC Central Division champions. The Colts hanging in against the Raiders. Al Davis has said we're going for the wild card spot in Seattle and Denver still slugging it out up in the Rockies today, 17-17. Our score, 28-3. It was 7-3 at the half. We've got 10-54 to go and the 49ers in command. Oops. Flag down, New Orleans, it'll cost him five. Pass is complete, but forget about it. Growth, number 86. Jeff kind of came off the football too soon. Going to bring this back. Want, you know, forget that you got a flag on this thing. You can see some, some things that this young man can do. He can move, he can avoid the rush, has the strength to get outside, then he has the good vision downfield to pick out the guy that's open and see everything in front of him. Pop that football in there. That was a good job. Illegal motion, number 88, offense. Whoops. Second you, down. Excuse me. Eugene, Eugene Goodlow. Goodlow. Goodlow just activated last week after six weeks on the injured reserve because of a pulled hamstring. You know, my brother Craig played here for the Saints or had a tryout with him, and I, when he was cut, I asked him about Wilson and the guys they had here. And one thing, he was very impressed with, with Wilson was his, was his knowledge of offensive football. Number two, his strong arm. Second down. 15. Into the flat. Caught by Larry Hardy, the tight end, to the 29-yard line. 
You know, we were talking to Eric Wright, number 21, the right corner for the 49ers, and I was asking him, you know, getting to, to Hicks, is, Hicks and Wright, and you had and you had uh, uh, a lot over at the corner. I said, what happens when there's Eric Wright, number 21? What happens when a guy like Fred Dean comes into to the football game? He says, you know what happens, Terry? He says, I'm able to gamble. Instead of just drifting back in my zones now, I come back and squat. In other words, they go back 10 yards, and they just settle right there because they know that the quarterback isn't going to have enough time to sit there and beat them deep. So these guys gamble more. 74 is in the football game. That's mean Fred Dean. And he's lined up against Kelvin Clark this time. Third down. Five-man rush. Wilson stands strong. Got the pass away to Turner. First down at the 42. Boy, good job by their offensive line. Carlton take, Williamson makes the tackle and watch Fred Dean I, and what the offensive line did against him, Terry. I tell you, as a quarterback, you gotta appreciate. Your, your tackles. Kelvin Clark, boy, he does a super job on Fred Dean that time, 74. Got his hand on him a little bit, but gee whiz, that's all right. Did a good job of, of stopping his movement. Hit him right at the line of scrimmage, held him up, gave, gave Wilson just enough time to get that football off. Boy, that's a good job by Clark. Part of the San Diego connection then is Gary Big Hands Johnson came through and made contact with Wilson. He is one of six former Chargers who are currently on the 49er roster. First and ten. I love these corners. Look at him trying to mess with Dave's. Trying to mess with his mind, playing games with him. Incomplete. Intended for Hobie Brenner. You know, these corners get a young guy like Wilson. They'll come up tight and they'll drift back. Safeties will come up tight and they'll drift back. This poor guy right here, number 18, Wilson, he's a gee whiz. What are they going to do? And then all they do is drop off and play a simple little old coverage. Eric Wright's having a ball. He said, hey, man, we got a 28-3 lead. We got old mean Fred Dean in here. Boy, I'm going to pick me off one and go all the way. I'm going <laughs> to mess with number 18's mind. It's a lot easier, isn't it, when it's 28-3? to Oh, gee, it's fun. You know, as a quarterback, it's fun. Normally, I'm on, you would be on the sidelines. I said, I, I don't play anymore. But, you know, when you're 28-3, to gamble, have some fun. Hey, you're fixing to win the division, boy. It's a fun time. And with the win today, the 49ers, there's the blitz. Good job. Good job by Wilson. Good job. And Tyrone Young, who's playing with a severe ankle injury, keeps his string alike. He has caught a pass in every game this year. Well, he did a good job this time. David Wilson, number 18. He saw Carlton, Will Carlton Williamson, number 27, the strong safety. Blitz inside, says, oh, I see you. Tyrone Young, 89. He has to see it also so that the quarterback and the receiver can be on the same page. He sees it, runs a slant, got man-to-man -man coverage, pops that ball in there. Good play. Clock keeps winding down. 8.25 to go. Third and two, 28 to three. It's been all San Francisco in the third and fourth quarters. And it'll be fourth and one for the 49ers. As they were unable to pick up the first down. Probably go for it, Terry. Why not? 28 to 3, 8, eight 9 and counting. What do you do? Third down, fourth down and one. Call timeout. I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd get in an opposite set and I'd motion a guy back and I'd run me a back in the flat and I'd pick out on the slot and roll out that way. Give myself a chance to either hit the pick or run it in for a touchdown. How's that sound? That's what I figured you'd do. <laughs> he will come out with some kind of play action and try to get something with their tight end short. Try a little flat pass or something like that. Now I see the halfback is cheated over to the strong side. That's either for pickup or for to get him out in the flat. Let's see what happens. Fourth and two. No play action here. Nope. No first down either. Intended for Tyrone Young. My play was better, wasn't it? I think it might have worked. <laughs> so the 49ers get it back with 7.59 to go. And a dismal, suddenly dismal afternoon for the New Orleans Saints. They will fall to six and seven and uh, have to go out on the West Coast to face the Los Angeles Rams next week. 49ers are about to wrap up their 12th victory of the year. Coming up next Saturday, the Army Cadets against the Navy Midshipmen from Philadelphia. That's live at 12 o'clock Eastern Time next Saturday on CBS Sports. And that will be followed by NCAA basketball, Oklahoma and Illinois. Montana to Mike Wilson, or it's Matt Cavanaugh who's in a quarterback, and he finds Wilson to the 23-yard line. So it's mop-up time for the 49ers as Cavanaugh gets action in the game and completes his first pass for the season, 22 of 46 for 325 yards. He had one start. He came on in the latter stages of the first meeting between these two when uh, Montana went out with a bruised sternum, and then Cavanaugh started the next week against Philadelphia and had the majority of his action in that game. First down and 10, 49ers leading 28 to 3 with 7.20 to go in the game. Derek Harmon, the rookie from Cornell, 
gets into the lineup and has the carry. Joe started out missing his first eight passes, winds up under 50% for the first time in a long time at 14 of 30 for 177, but his knowledge and right arm broke it open in the third well, quarter. Well, you know, Terry. Bill Walsh told us that, he said, you know, gee whiz, Joe's probably on the top of his game. You know, quarterbacks peak. There's a time period where you peak, and how, how long that peak lasts, you know, three or four, five years, who knows? But he said he's on top of his game. He knows this offense. He understands what's going on. He said, hey, I know he's on top of it because he comes back at me and complains about the plays I've been calling. <laughs> Derek Harmon broke a lot, a lot of Ed Marinero's rushing records at uh, Cornell. Been a long, long season for George Rogers and the Saints. Well, number 38, it's, 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 it's been kind of one of those years where so much was expected of the Saints, so much from their offense, so much from this man right here. And then midway through the season, they bring in number 35, Earl Campbell, in a trade from the Houston Oilers, and that even compounded even more. And, and this guy is truly one of the great running backs, 21 for 88, not a bad day's effort against one of the fine defenses in the National Football League. First and 10, 49ers with a 28 to 3 lead, six minutes exactly remaining in the game. Harmon, a little juke, a little spin, and down to the six-yard line. Billy Shields is in at left tackle now. Guy McIntyre at left guard. Alan Kennedy at right tackle as a couple of the backup uh, linemen are getting a chance to play for the 49ers. Seattle again has taken the lead now on a Dave Craig to Steve Largent pass from three yards out with 12.30 remaining in the game. And a Seattle victory in that game will tie them up. The Raiders now leading 21 to 7 in the fourth quarter. Bum's team is down 28 to 3. With 5-18 to go in the game. Second down and goal. Bill Ring. To the two-yard line. Good job by left guard Guy McIntyre pulling and leading the play, and though Bill Ring got right in his hip pocket. You know, I, in sitting here and analyzing this football game, is, and the Saints in particular, you look back and and you, and you try to, and, you know, figure out what the heck happened. He came off a game against the Steelers where they were emo emotionally high, Vernon, and, and really played one of the most inspiring football games I had seen them play all year. And this is, a, you know, we've seen a lot of their games. It could be that that football team was drained from that Monday night effort because the emotion, the enthusiasm that they that they demonstrated Monday night hasn't really appeared today, hadn't really surfaced today. I think it's, this could be a tired football team these 49ers are, are playing today. 49ers are over 200 yards rushing for this game, and they've got a touchdown on the ground right now. Bill Ring gets the six. Bill Ring, BYU, we tried to get this guy. I told Chuck, no, please don't cut him. He's the only guy I've ever seen that could come out of a Steeler backfield and run routes and beat linebackers and catch passes, and that's what you want to do. Let's don't get rid of this guy. Chuck said, Dad, we got to get rid of him because we got to got to keep some other guys around. They did. We get rid of him. They pick him up and use him right, and by golly, he's a fine running back. Good job there of cutting inside, getting a touchdown. Number 30, Bill Ring. California boy, BYU. And really well liked in the 49er uh, camp. Very popular young player. Kavanaugh will hold, Wershing will kick. It's up and it's good, and it's 35 to 3. 421 remaining in the ball game. It's all going the 49er way right now. It was at halftime, but then Earl Cooper and Fred Solomon caught passes from the arm of Joe Montana in the third quarter. Todd Shell returned to Richard Todd pass for a touchdown with a pass interception. Now Bill Ring has scored, uh, scored, and it's 35 to three. Jitter Fields at the goal line for the Saints. Of course, the key for New Orleans hopes today was a, a victory in hopes of a wild card. Here are the wild card standings now since the 49ers are in and Chicago is going to be in. Dallas, Washington, the Giants, and the Rams at eight and five. St. Louis at six and seven. And New Orleans also at six and seven with their loss today. So uh, their hopes have diminished, but nonetheless, they go out to face the Rams next week. They are not mathematically eliminated yet from the wild card possibility. And that's the lineup on CBS. The NFL. We had a mistake on the graphic. St. Louis did win today on Neil O'Donohue's field goal, and they are seven and six for the year. Wilson has eight sacks today. That's a season high for the 49ers. Gary Big Hands Johnson got this one. It's his eighth of the year. 
and the travails continue for this New Orleans team. Just under four minutes remaining in the ball game as Johnson gets the eighth sack by the 49er defense today. Again, a correction. There it is. St. Louis won today. They trail the other wild card possibilities by one game. They are seven and six, and the Saints fall to six and seven. 340 remaining in the ball game. Wilson complete to Larry Hardy at the 22 yard line. You know, it's kind of interesting. You know, in a situation like this where everybody, you would expect Vernon that a defense would, would get in into their zone coverages, you know, once again, but they fail to do that. They come out and they get into what is a, what they call a tandem where they fake zones and take two safeties, play one about the 20 yard depth line and then about the 40 yard depth line and just play them in the middle. Once again, demonstrating that they want to show a lots of coverages to the team they're going to play next week. 305 to go in the ball game. Got a question about getting ready for playoffs. I want to ask you after this play. Wilson, incomplete. There are two different philosophies, Terry. Now, here are the 49ers who have gotten the division sacked up. They've got three games to go. In the NFC Western to Eastern Division, you've got all those teams fighting. Would you rather be in a situation where you have sacked it early and you can just kind of ease into the playoffs, or would you rather have a competitive, competitive problem going in? I would rather, as an, as an athlete, Vern, I, I personally would rather have it wrapped up. That takes the pressure off the next three weeks. You've got your game in edge. I, you have quarterbacks in your first line unit maybe go a half or three quarters like you would do in, in preseason, but I would want to have it wrapped up. I would want to know that, by golly, we got her sewed up. That takes the pressure off. Then the playoffs, boy, they're a whole new ball game, and you'll be fresh and ready to go. Macklemore with Brian Hansen's very long kick. Counter punches to the 33. Jim Peterzak makes the tackle. That's a 55-yard kick for Brian Hansen. 12 on the return. And the crowd of 65,000 that had gathered has begun to disperse. Many of them have uh, headed on out to Poydras Street. Our game winding down and following the conclusion of our game tonight on CBS, 60 Minutes, followed by Murder, She Wrote, The Jeffersons, Alice, and Trapper John, M.D., the Outstanding Sunday night lineup begins with 60 minutes tonight on CBS. 2.44 to go over in Lundquist, Terry Bradshaw here with the 49ers well in command with a 35-3 lead after leading by only 7-3 at the half. Derek Harmon, 5'10", 200-pound rookie from Cornell with another carry, and Frank Warren and Tony Elliott make the tackle. Well, last year they were within a Mike Lansford field goal of making the playoffs. Now they're going to fall under 500. What's going through their mind? Well, they're disappointed. I've been there on that bench when so much was, Burma, so much was expected from you uh, as an individual and as a team. These Saints, boy, they, they had this town on, on, you know, they were sky high, expecting to go to the playoffs, and boy, everything pointing in that direction. It just seems the bottom has fallen out on them. Now, hey, you, know, you regroup, your chances of making the playoffs are over. Maybe next year they, you come in and everybody writes you off and you come in, there's no pressure on you, and you say, by golly, we're going to prove to you we can make it. Maybe that's the edge they need to get them in there. Poorly inside, but contentment on the other side of the field. You look at Michael Carter, number 95, and Bubba Paris, Fred Dean, Gary Big Hands Johnson, Jeff Stover. That's a bunch that has now won $10,000 each. And Ricky Ellison told us yesterday, hey, that means a lot for us low-round draft choices who don't have the big salaries. <laughs> Second down and eight. Means a lot of us standing up here in this booth, too. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I, I kind of envy for those 49er guys, Terry, and I know you've been on those long plane flights after a division-clinching victory, and there's, a, there's an air in content of contentment going back home and satisfaction. It's really kind of hard to explain, isn't it? Well, it is. You know, when you... When you know that you're the, the king pins of your division, boy, that's a lot of pride. You can see here they're going to finish 12 and 1, and they're going to, you know, more than likely get what? They got the home field advantage for the playoffs for as long as they can stay in there. And like I told Walter, said, you've got it for the Super Bowl. Heck, they're playing it right down the road from your home park. So, you know, it's, it's a great feeling. And as an athlete, you just can't explain it. It's almost indescribable. It's just a wonderful, wonderful, uh, uh, well, I guess contentment comes over you. Mm -hmm. And if you played and played well, then that adds even more to it. Third division victory out of the last four years. 
They went 16 and three and won the uh, Super Bowl in 81. Had a bad year in the strike season. Well, they did. Well, they're coming off the uh, uh, Super Bowl year and everybody get taking a shot at them. They were a young football team and they didn't know how to how to face that week in and week out. That pressure of winning the Super Bowl and having to face 16 teams that thought they were playing the Super Bowl. That's pretty tough. You know, there's nothing. Excuse me, Vern. There's nothing greater than winning your division. That feeling inside. But I'll tell you, there's nothing compared to winning it the first time. The first time for anything, I think, is the thing that means the most to people. The thing that they recall later on in life. Which is why, if it ever does happen to this city, and someday it must in New Orleans, this town will absolutely explode. Oh, absolutely. The great fans down here. These Louisiana folks are good people. There's the kick. Look at that thing. By Runniger that just <laughs> it looks like a basketball. <laughs> and it comes to a stop at the 13-yard line. Our executive producer of the NFL today is Terry O'Neill. Senior producer Charles H. Milton III. Today's game produced by Michael Burks and directed by John McDonough, Jr. Our associate producer, John Fortunato. Our associate director, Chris Slaughter. Our field technical manager, William Dippold. And the broadcast associates, Vin DeVito and Billy Herbstman. And while you look at the rest of the list, Want to thank our spotters, Nancy Lundquist, Joe Cash, Gary Bradshaw. Yeah. Yeah, Gary back with us. Plug in for you. And Dave Yagi, our statistician. Coming up, Brent and Irv with a wrap-up show. We've got nine seconds remaining in this ball game in which the 49ers have won their 12th of the season, their sixth in a row. The only defeat this season of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Tyrone Young with a catch out on the right flank at the 22-yard line. But that will do it. Our final score, 35 to 3. Two touchdown tosses from Montana in the third quarter. And Todd Shell's pass interception return. And coming up, the NFL Today, the wrap-up show with Brent Musburger. Now let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Vern and Terry, thank you. And Irv Cross, I want to remind everybody that as soon as we get done with this post-game show, of course, 60 Minutes will be coming up next here on CBS. Let's quickly get you up to date with all the scores. Some big games are still in progress, especially in the AFC. San Francisco, of course, as you know, they have wrapped up the NFC's Western Division, 35-3 over the New Orleans Saints. The Raiders, they are beating up on Indianapolis and Los Angeles. It is 21-7. They are late in the fourth quarter of that one. Seattle and Denver, the Seahawks have taken the lead but the Broncos are trying to come back right now it is 27 23 Seahawks with the lead in that game John Elway has just rallied the Broncos for a score to pull them within four points Chicago over Minnesota the Bears are going to wrap up the NFC Central Division with a win in that one St. Louis earlier today in dramatic fashion defeated the Philadelphia Eagles 17 to 16 the Giants stayed in a three-way tie for first in the NFC East 28 27 over the Kansas City Chiefs Washington routed Buffalo in the 41 to 14 and Jimmy the Greek tells me that Buffalo will be looking at Illinois coach Mike White he could be moving into that job situation next season Cincinnati over Atlanta 35 to 14 the Bengals stay within two games of the Pittsburgh Steelers in the AFC Central Division the Cleveland Browns over the Houston Oilers 27 10 the final there and Marty Schottenheimer has been doing a good job the last few weeks as the Browns new head coach Pittsburgh scores the most points of any team this season 52 20 24 over the San Diego Chargers, who lost Dan Fouts because of an injury in that game. The Steelers stay two games ahead of the Bengals. And the Los Angeles Rams, because of a missed extra point by Tampa Bay early in the game, edged the Buccaneers 34-33. It was a great afternoon by Eric Dickerson. We're going to show you how good. And, of course, the Rams are very much in pursuit of a wild-card spot in the playoffs in the NFC. And Irv and I will continue with our post-game show here on CBS in just a moment. together. <laughs> 